Welcome back to the show. We got a great one for you with Monty of Roach Customs. Monty's a pinstriper, a performance bagger rider, and all around good dude. This episode is brought to you by Simpson Motorcycle Helmets, which is my helmet of choice. And you can check them out at Simpson Motorcycle Helmets on Instagram, as well as SimpsonMotorcycleHelmets.com. Check those guys out. Lexan Moto has an intercom system for you. The all-new Lexan G16 is the group rider's long-awaited answer to an affordable intercom system. With a 16-rider comm system, Bluetooth 5.0, and music sharing, it'll keep your group connected while traveling together. This is another great product from the Lexan team geared at making motorcycle rides and travel more enjoyable. Check it all out at lexan-moto.com where you can apply the Fast Life offer code and save yourself 15% off. And give them a follow on Instagram at LexanMoto. Thundermax has your EFI equipped Harley Davidson covered with their high quality auto tuning ECMs. I have been running their computer on my road glide for over 40,000 miles and it continues to give me the optimal performance out of my engine. Paired with a touring oil cooler fan, my bike has been running strong and at a desirable temperature. You can check out these products at shoptmax.com and use offer code FASTLIFE to save yourself 10% off. And as always, give these guys a follow on Instagram at ThundermaxEFI. I switched all my lighting on my Road Glide to Electric Lighting Co. I'm a huge fan of their looks and their improved visibility I get from the Shark Tooth headlight. And I'm digging the five year warranty on the 15 different LED headlight options they have for your motorcycle. Their deluxe and premium LED turn signals offer 530 lumens of bright white running light, which are the be- the brightest in the industry and have a lifetime warranty. And last but not least, the LED tail lamps come in a wide range of design to add that finishing touch and all products are plug and play. NAMS custom cycle products since 1999 have been offering American made wiring products for all things V-Twin and Badlands for over 30 years have been offering the most reliable and dependable lighting modules in the USA backed by a lifetime warranty. Find out more about these great companies at namscustomcycleproducts.com and you can drop the FL2020 offer code which gives you free shipping on orders over $100. Check them out. John Jessup's Team Dream Rides out of Stockton, California is a one-stop shop for you to have your motorcycle customized, maintained, repaired, and upgraded. With in-house dyno tuning and parts and accessories, also check out teamdreamrides.com online store to see the full array of products for your bike and you as a rider and if you're short on cash you can take advantage of the 100 days same as cash financing on all products teamdreamrides.com all you need is a job and a bank account and while you're at it give john and the team a follow on instagram at dreamridesjohn paint huffer metal flake has been with our podcast since day one and i've been using their flakes and pearls in my paint work for over four years now You can get started down this custom paint path with many must-have items in the custom paint process at PaintHuffer.com. And you can save yourself some coin by using the FastLife25 offer code. And last but not least, you can get a lot of inspiration by checking out all the amazing paint work created with PaintHuffer products at PaintHufferMetalFlake on Instagram. Welcome back. If you guys aren't following Roach Customs on Instagram, then do yourself a favor and head on over to Instagram and type those words in and give this guy a follow. He's a, you're going to see, he's a bad dude and a good friend and uh, glad he came onto the podcast. I caught him while he was doing his tour around the country, which he follows a lot of the rallies, pinstriping and, and being that guy at the rally that just has to deal with a lot of crazy shit, which you'll hear about on this podcast. But before we get too far or before I give you too much information about him, why don't I just shut the hell up and let you hear it from him? Here we go. Monty Roach. Hey, guys. You ready to let the dogs out? Fast Life Podcast. Thanks. Back. Back. This is my first time here. Well, back to the podcast. Not your oh, first time on it. You yeah. Know I mean? Last time I didn't have a mic. You didn't have a mic there? No. I thought not, you did. Not in the hotel room. How many people were with us? I know it was me, you, Kyle, Hoffman, Daniel. And yeah. Who else? It was you, too. I, th- I so. think it was, 
Yeah, it's like five of us. That's right. Yeah. So, so was, with me, plus yeah. So that yeah, I get it now. Yeah. You you talk though, didn't you? Um, towards the end for like two minutes. Oh yeah. man, I feel bad. I was now. shy, dude. I'm like, I'm not. I'm nobody. I didn't even have a performance beggar at that time. Come on. But I mean, up to you, like technically, I had yeah. T bars. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, then you're you're winning. Yeah. So, well, shit, man. It's good to have you on finally. Yeah, it, I'm glad to be here. Hell yeah. So, I've heard stories about you. Good or bad. Uh, we'll see. Okay. No, no, but like, uh, you know, first off, like it, the stories I heard is like, yeah, you know, Monty's killing it out there. He's only 24 years old. I'm like, fuck, really? I don't know if you, you I wouldn't say you look 24, but you don't no. look old. Like you're not like widows. 27 to 35. Okay. That's, that's the game that Kyle plays at the restaurants. Hey, yeah. how old do you think he is? Exactly. Yeah. Usually if it's outside those numbers, I'll buy people like a round of drinks or something. But. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so it's like, that's the first thing is like to be. You know, in a in, in a really good position that you're in now, I mean, like traveling, doing these these rallies and all these things. But to do that at a young age where most people are still giving you the pass of being a fuck up at most kids that age, when they do stuff that's not good, it's like, oh, well, he's only 24. Yeah. I, you know I what I mean? See that. And so here you are fucking killing it at 24 years old. So, I mean, it, I don't think I'm killing it, but I mean, I'm not anywhere where I want to be. None so, of us are. We're yeah. never where we want to be. Right. If you're where you want to be, then it means uh, we're like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. Like, I don't know. That's 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 the end of progression. Is it? Feels like, like I don't it. know. Uh, it doesn't seem like quite. I don't know. It's weird. I don't know how to put it. Yeah. <laughs> so where are you? Like, are you originally from Minneapolis? Is that no. where you? So where? No. You? So and I, I believe Jeremy let this one out yeah. last time. So I'm originally from Lithuania. Yeah. I came here when I was eight years old with my mom. Mm -hmm. And basically, um, I mean, like long story short, um, my biologic father, he ran away before I was born, never met him. And we grew up poor. Like, I mean, it was just small uh, apartment. I was living yeah. with my grandparents. And uh, what happened was, is one of my mom's friends ended up meeting a guy and he was from the United States. Um, they ended up getting married, moved um, to Minneapolis. And then... When I say my dad is my stepdad, he was uh, he was like good friends with um, the dude. So yeah. he ended up just kind of stopping by one day, and um, he was talking to my mom's friend, like, "Hey, you know anybody single, yeah. you know, in Lithuania?" And she's like, "Oh yeah, I got this, you know, this friend of mine," and it was my mom. Yeah. So my mom's like, she gets this phone call, and she's like, "Hey, um, there's this American that's interested in you." And my mom's like, "I don't speak English, first of all. Damn. Like, I'm no, I'm 35 years old. I'm not interested." And she's like, oh, come on, you know, like, and like I said, so long story short, gets this letter in the mail. My cousin translates the thing because he can read, speak, write English. And then she's like, I'm not writing back. Like, you know, uh, I don't know. Like, I don't know what yeah. to do. She brings a letter to work the next day. Her coworker is like, what do you got to lose? Like, come on, yeah. write back. So they wrote, they put some together. They wrote, you know, wrote him a letter back and then they started emailing each other back and forth. Next thing I know, my mom was taking English classes and that same couple that I was talking about, they would go to Lithuania to visit mm -hmm. her family every year. So my dad ended up going with and um, him and my mom, they hit it off and he came back there two more times. And like on the third time we went back with him. So it was literally a complete life changing experience. Um, do you know much about being in Lithuania? Like, yeah. So like I'll still go back and visit mm -hmm. every couple of years, uh, usually over like Christmas, New Year's, um, go back and visit family. But um, like, I remember growing up and everything like it's just, I, so in 91, they um, kind of became, you know, they got their independence from the Soviet Union. Yeah. So they were, you know, a socialist country and like, it was just, um, you know, so I was born in 95 and then like with my, you know, my mom would always talk about, you know, things like back. And so it's it just, it was poor. Like they yeah. didn't have that, they didn't have the amount of time to like, I mean, literally they started fresh in 91. So all the small little things that we take for granted here, like we don't have over there. And it's just like, it was the smallest, stupidest little things. I mean, like, um, I like, I remember like breakfast cereal was a treat. Okay. Like yeah. we just wouldn't get it because it's like, no, like you don't need it. We're not spending money on it. And yeah. like we did, we had just enough to get by. And then I remember when we first came here, 
we, you know, walk into this house and my dad had like the neighbors come over and they laid out like, or like put balloons everywhere and all this stuff. And like, it was just like, you know, welcome home. And I open up the kitchen cabinet and it's nothing but like, you know, the small little boxes of breakfast cereal, yeah, like yeah. you can buy like the big variety packs. And it's just like the whole thing was just full. And I'm like, oh my God, like, <laughs> this is amazing. Like it's, yeah. You know, but like I said, I was eight years old. Um, so yeah, like, uh, so I'm not, yeah, I'm originally from Lithuania, came here when I was eight with my mom. Mm -hmm. Um, but that, like, that's gotta be, you know, you said it's something real good there or something that's like people don't think about, you know, they had just got their independence from Russia basically yeah. or, or yep. whatever Soviet union at the yeah. time. And so y there's no time for you to generate wealth as a family right. starting so, that fresh. Exactly. And like, and it wasn't really even just that, like, um, it, I mean, even up until now, their average income is $12,000 a year. So, um, yeah, like now we're on a completely different scale where everything over there is cheaper. And, you know, I'll have like somebody or one of the family members, they'll come over here and they'll be like, oh, everything's so expensive. Well, like we make more money than they do. Yeah. But everything like we it's it, it's on the same scale. So you go and you buy, you know um you know let's say a dozen eggs or something like that you know they cost this much here but they're way less over there but it's because they only make like i said you know their average income is like 12 grand a year so mm. it's they can get by on a thousand bucks a month where here you know in the united states like dude like you know good luck like exactly yeah. exactly um but that's just the way it is so and now as far as like generating income as you know a family like you were saying um i don't know like it's I just remember you only got what you needed and the, you just save and save and save because you don't know like what's going to happen. Like, I mean, like my great grandpa, he was uh, assassinated by the KGB. He was wow. uh, actually captured by them. And then uh, they held him in like a little cell. And then one day they just, you know, like off to him. Yeah. Um, like we could a actually go to the museum where he was killed. Um, like my grandpa, they, when he was like 18, um, they were looking they were basically going from farm to farm looking for people that could recruit into the army. So he ran away and he hid in like a tree for like three days in this mm. little forest while they made him like cook and do all this stuff. And then after that, I don't remember if they just ended up like torching the house or they just took it over and just kicked them out or something like that. Or, mm. but like they just, so both my grandma and my grandpa, um, were completely homeless. Like, I mean, like it's just, it's so when you talk to them and like being that I, like they're both gone now. But when I remember when I was little, they would tell you all these stories and they literally started with absolutely nothing. And so I think that's why, like, you know, it's like we, you know, you only do what you need. Like, you know, this is, you, you're not gonna, it wasn't definitely like here where it's like, okay, I'm going to go on vacation. Like they didn't, didn't do that. Yeah, it was an you option. Know, they never went on vacation up until, uh, it was like 2007 or 2008, they actually came and visited us here mm. for a month. And it was like their first vacation that they ever took in their life. Wow. Um, so it's was, it was pretty interesting. Um, it's gotta be cold but, as fuck up there too, huh? No, it's it's the same as Minnesota, you know, Seriously? where I'm from, uh, very similar climate. So it's warmer in the winters and colder in the summers, uh, just a little bit, uh, but otherwise it's very similar. Yeah, it's like, I, I've been looking at, cause I look at maps a lot for like bike trips Okay. and it's so crazy because if you look at like the longitude and latitude, I think the latitude would be like east to west. Yeah. I don't know. Something like that. Something so like that. If you look at the latitude, I guess I could be wrong. People are probably yelling um, of like New York and you have that go straight across yep. the earth. Like that's Spain. Yeah. That's Mediterranean. Yeah, true. Yeah, and then so and then you go up towards Maine. Now you're looking at uh, like like London and then you go up towards like you know, uh, Nova Scotia, now you're getting more into like your, maybe around Sweden and that kind of line. You know what I mean? And, and like Lithuania, yeah, that's, that's one thing that I never really, yeah. You know, Lithuania at, technically is like not too far South of Greenland or not correct. Greenland, uh, uh, Iceland. Like, uh, right. No, you're thinking like Norway or something, I believe. So look, right? so or, like imagine there's a line going straight across. Yep. And so Iceland, Sweden, Finland. Now your Lithuania is a little bit further. Yeah. yeah so you're, I mean, you're further south. You're probably. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Like um, the bottom tip of Greenland or, or like, 
Yeah, but I mean, as far as those the lines go, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. But then the other thing is, is like um, the ocean and like, so for instance, oh. it's a Baltic Sea okay. right there. That uh, kind of dictates the climate. Oh, um, okay. So, that would make some. Yeah. I'm just thinking like a, a universal hotter and colder yeah. line. Like, it, so like it's for the instance, same. Yeah. So like, like a chili um, bowl haircut. Like yeah. that the, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Which I had one of those when Hell I was little. Yeah. yeah. We all did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like. So the, the Baltic Sea, I think they kind of like it dictates the climate where it's, um, you know, in the in the winters, it will literally snow and then all of it will just melt all of a sudden. Like mm-hmm. you'll just get the you get these warm and cold fronts that come in yeah, constantly. Yeah. But I don't know. so how did you know of is the country been on a good path as far as like prosperity since, you know, since so 91? N- well, now, like they're finally starting to catch on um, where. When we left, I remember now, like in the capital city, Vilnius, um, there's a, a river that kind of goes right through the center of it, and they have Old Town and New Town. On one town or one side, it's you know Old Town, and it's all like everything is all old buildings, everything's all you know restored, like and it's it's awesome, mm. super cool place for you know to go tour yeah. around all cobblestone streets and stuff like that very european on the other side it's now it's very modern so it's all skyscrapers and stuff like that but before when we left they never had that so they're starting yeah. to finally catch on um when i i went back two years ago and like i was talking to some family and like friends and they had some people over and they're like you know like america you know 10 years ago it's like where everybody dreamed to go but they're like now that we finally started to advance it's like you know, this isn't so bad. We are starting to have the same things that you guys are having. Yeah. But, um, without all the bullshit. <laughs> right. And that's the thing there. Like, dude, it's nobody gets offended by anything like they yeah. do here. Like it's, it's weird. Like I remember, uh, went back in 20, 2017. It was, uh, in February. It was actually, it was my mom's 50th birthday because, um, She's got a twin over there, so she's like, "I'm gonna celebrate. I want to celebrate her birthdays together." Yeah. And so they had this big party and stuff like that. And um, and I had just turned was it 21, mm-hmm. I want to say. And uh, yeah, it, so I j- had just turned 21, went over there, and now like the before that, I hadn't been back for like five, six years. So when you go over there, when you're you know. 14, 15 years old. And mm-hmm. it's like, this is boring. Like you're just hanging around with a bunch of old people. And it's like, you know, th- this kind of sucks. Yeah, yeah. So then you go back, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm 21. It's like, all right, now I can actually go out drinking and everything and like actually go out and have fun. And uh, at that time, uh, they just recently changed it, but it was 18 years old to drink. Yeah. Um, so we went out, it was me and um, like three of my cousins and, or it was actually just one of my cousins and a couple of his friends, I believe. Um, Cause I got, one cousin that's younger and I got two of them that are in their thirties, but we walk up to this restaurant or this bar and it was like this pretty cool place. Um, and they're like, how old are you? And I'm like, oh, you know, 21. Like, and they're like, Oh, sorry, you can't come in here. And I'm like, why not? And he's like, Oh, you know, 25 and older only. And I was, so they're like, Oh, okay, no problem. You know, and they walk away and I'm like, What's up with like if they did that in the United States, like that would be dude, yeah. that would be like World War Three, you know, over <laughs> here. Like people would be rioting and you know breaking windows and shit. And like oh, because the reason they do that is because they see it as anybody that's younger than twenty five isn't going to spend the money here. So they only want people that are older and they're actually going to hang out and spend money where it's not going to be eighteen year olds coming in for one drink and then leaving. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I guess it kind of makes sense but we kind of have a few of those here but they're not very common and popular yeah yeah, yeah so like I, i've never seen it before yeah. and they're just like yeah it's no big deal like it just it is what it is yeah like, it's usually like a yeah. smaller venue that only has so much space and you don't want a whole bunch of folks in there i don't that makes sense for them to use it for that reason for the yeah. you know an older crowd's going to spend more money yeah um but yeah i get that like plus like i don't know like you heard my 18 year old daughter like i don't yeah. i don't want to go you know, hang out in a bar with 18 year olds. All oh, right. Oh, for you know sure. what I mean? I don't know. It, uh, I guess some, and, some dudes are into yeah. that. Yeah. And it's just like, <laughs> um, so then after that, it's like, we go to a different place and what they did is, um, like downtown, they actually ran out of room. Like they, you know, they can't build anything cause it's all very old architecture. Um, so everything is being, that's a tourist area. Like, you know, they got, um, everything's kind of, uh, taken over and by restaurants, bars, you know, um, 
knickknack stores to like everything. Yeah. So what they started doing is they started opening up the cellars that are underneath the streets where like back in, you know, the 17, 1800s, that's where people would, you know, put their potatoes to keep them cold over, you know, yeah. you know that type of thing. And so you literally just walk into a door and it straight down with lights hung up around the ceiling. Like there's like no electricity down there. Um, and there's a bunch of small little rooms with these little bars. And like, I'm like, dude, this is awesome. Like, you know, yeah. it just, and it's nothing but dirt and rock around you. Yeah. Um, so I remember, I think we ordered like four Jack and Cokes and, you know, they crack open a, a actual glass bottle of Coke and, um, it's like, yeah, you know, it's going to be like $16 and I'm like, or euros. And I'm like, what, you know, for, and they were like the tall glasses. And it's like, is that a lot? Like, ha no, like that's dude, that's true. Where can you go get four Jack and Cokes at like, you know, and what oh. I'm saying, like tall ones too, like, you know, for like 16 bucks. And I mean, it's just, it was like, it was unbelievable. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, especially for a touristy place, usually like, you know, I guess the other thing is I'm thinking of, for instance, you know, bike rallies where you go to, a, you know, you go to Sturgis, you order one drink and it's 12 bucks or yeah know, exactly so. but <laughs> that's know. gotta be uh, man like it, it it's gotta be crazy to have like to grow up here i mean a lot of your conscious young uh, uh, you know childhood is probably with a lot of things here as well right yeah that, that's where like most of it is i would yeah. say um i finished first grade over there but like after that like when i came here i went right into second grade i didn't know any english either for real? when i came here um i literally knew like three words you got that north north accent and everything yeah you're, you betcha yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't yeah. even be able to tell that you're you know like not that like you would have a distinctive yeah and it's like but what's it, the language over there is it like Lithuanian. Lithuanian? okay yeah um so Completely, pretty much different than anything it's else. It's not like Russian or no, anything like it, that. No, uh, Russian's a lot more harsh, and then they have like a lot of people are like, "Oh, it sounds like Russian," but um, then Russians have you know their own alphabet and mm, yeah, their shit's like it's crazy weird. Yeah. yeah, it's like yeah. symbols and shit. It looks yeah. like alien pretty stuff, much like fucking Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild though, man. So you know, like you're here, you know, you come to this, you know, land or whatever. What? You know, you were telling me last night, but for the audience, man, like, what was it that got you into the striping? Okay, so um, now my stepdad, which, like I said, I, I, he's my dad. Uh, so that's the only dad I've ever had, so I call him my dad. He um, has been into cars, motorcycles, I mean, like, ever since he was really little. Mm -hmm. And he's got a collection of probably... Well, up until a few years ago, we probably had 40 to 50 motorcycles, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of European type stuff. So, or British, um, like, so, you know, Triumphs, Norton's, BSAs, yeah. Royal Enfields, that type of thing. But, um, that, that was like his thing. So he would just collect these bikes and, um, then he also owns a golf car dealership. So my grandpa started in like the early nineties, just as something to do. Um, he owned a Ford dealership for 30 years before that retired, got bored, ended up buying a building so he could, you know, do some woodworking and ended up buying some golf cars. Got so busy, he had my dad come in and then my dad ended up taking it over. Um, but when we first came here, like I would literally just go and hang out at this golf car shop. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of like, he'd, my thing was is like, I didn't have a whole lot of toys growing up. So then all of a sudden now, like I come here and it's like, we go to Walmart and I'm like, oh my God, I want this and I want that. And he's like, well, if you want that, it takes money. What do you got to do to, you know, make money? And I'm like, I don't know what. And he's like, you got to work. I'm like, okay. He's like, I'll give you three bucks an hour to organize, you know, this five gallon bucket of bolts and throw them all into this organizers. Here's, you know, like you, you know, teach me like yeah. little things. And that's kind of like, I think how, you know, you learn what a, you know, five sixteenths, you know, yeah. uh, like, and, you know, and, you know, like in all these like different, so I'm here organizing bolts and he's like, all right, here, you know, here's your three bucks. I go buy my little model motorcycle or whatever that I yeah. wanted. But then I started doing more and more where I was building uh, like custom golf cars, putting lift kits on them and stuff like that. And then uh, we did a lot of, up in Minnesota, uh, there's a lot of campgrounds. Yeah. So most people will go on vacation at their campgrounds, but they don't want anything really too fancy. So we'll just get a regular white golf cart, throw some black and red seats on it. And then I would take some vinyl tape that would be black and red and, you know, put that on there and these things would sell. I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like, so I was doing just vinyl pinstripes on these yeah. things. And then... Uh, and you were how old at this time? I don't know, 10, 11, 12 years old or something like that. <laughs> so... 
I ended up wanting a dirt bike and because like these kids at school, they're getting dirt bikes. I'm like, oh, I want a dirt bike. And he's like, all right, well, I'll tell you what, like, you know, I got a buddy of mine that's got this dirt bike for 500 bucks. If you if you want it, you know, I had some money saved up and he's like, you know, you can buy that and then, you know, pay me back. I'm like, all right. So I bought this dirt bike. I got bored with it and I was like 13, 14 or so. Um, and I'm like, I want to start saving for my first car. So he's like, hey, we just bought, he was, uh, you know, like it's a big Ford guy. Um, so he ended up buying this Fox body Mustang. I think it had blown head gas. It's just a horrible car. I and mean, like the thing was just a pile of shit. Mm -hmm. He had somebody put racing stripes on it with like a roller brush and uh, he paid like 800 bucks for this thing. Um, but it had like, it had a built motor with some, you know, like I said, it, but blown head gaskets and i think it was also actually also supercharged as well that was one of the reasons why he got it um so then he's like tell you what if you want that car i'll just sell it to you you sell your dirt bike and it'll be a great first car and i'm like okay so i sold the dirt bike for 800 dollars. i gave him the 800 bucks for the car and here i had this just pile of shit fox body mustang yeah so he's like, you know, I'm taking the supercharger off of it because you don't need that when you're 16. Yeah. He's like, and I'll help you fix some stuff up. And I'm like, all right, cool. Well, then I start looking into what actually stuff costs. And I'm like, shit, like I need to make money. Like yeah. this, you know, me working for, you know, five, six bucks an hour or whatever it was, like there's no way that mm -hmm. um, I'll be able to get the new paint job that yeah. I want, the wheels and all this other stuff. So we were watching a show on TV one day and uh, there was a dude that was pinstriping on there and he's like, Hey, you know, you've always been artistic. Um, you should, you should try that. And I'm like, okay. He's like, it'd be an awesome job. You can make some good money doing it. There isn't many people that do it around here. And uh, it'd be, it'd be fun cause you get to work around cars and motorcycles. So I'm like, okay, like I'm interested, you know? And it, He's like, tell you what, I'll make you a deal. He says, I'll buy you a starter kit, but once you get good, you got to do golf carts for me. And I'm like, okay, no problem. So the next day we order a striping kit online. And I literally, I took the thing out of the box and, you know, didn't have a clue what I was doing. I just, you know, grabbed a paintbrush and started doodling on this, you know, practice board. Guy walks in, who's a good friend of mine now. And he's like, hey man, I see your pinstriping. I'll give you 20 bucks to throw some spider webs on my tailgate and I'm like okay uh like 20 bucks for a 14 year old kid that's like you know yeah. that's a good amount of money that's a good weekend and uh <laughs> yeah so he's like tell you what you get a little better and I'll come back and I'm like all right sounds good and then so that was like August of 2010 and then you know I went to school and I was pinstriping everything I could so every single day I would after school I would literally be out in the garage striping for three four hours a day like I would literally come back at three four o'clock and I would just go in the garage and I'd just sit there and just pinstripe random stuff or just pinstripe on a board, wipe it off. And I just had fun doing it. Like there was yeah. just something I really liked about it. Um, so then I started pinstriping phones, like cell phone cases and folders and all this stuff. I did all my own stuff and I'd bring my stuff to school and all the kids would be like, dude, I want that. And yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, let me do that. But it's going to cost you three bucks. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did is, you know, cell phones, I charge like, two dollars for folders as like three or something like that and i'd bring all this stuff home over a weekend come back and make like 15 20 bucks you yeah. know on monday and uh i'm like all right it's like now instead of blowing it what i did is i went to the dollar store and i bought anything i could pinstripe for you know a dollar and it was uh beer mugs to uh, picture frames, um, metal water bottles. Like, I mean, like it's just, I literally would walk through there with a shopping cart and just pick up yeah. random stuff and I'd bring it home and I would just pinstripe all this stuff. So like, I didn't, you know, pinstripe a water bottle, take it and throw it in my room. Like, and I built up this whole inventory over the winter. Um, and my thing was, is I was going to go to a show in the spring and I was going to sell all of it. Like that's mm -hmm. what I had in my head. So then I did that over the whole winter. Come like May, I ended up borrowing a table uh, from like a family member, uh, got a tent and went to this, it was like a local rat rod show. Um, my parents dropped me off on like, it was that like- That was a good timing too, cause right around 2010, you had like the, um, you had like the, the hot rod, the rat rod, rat rod thing back. was just 
kicking off like crazy. Yeah, because like so, that whole Day of the Dead shit, and then like the chicks turning into that rockabilly look. Yeah, and, like the whole culture of like the custom culture at the time was was really becoming like like it was. I mean, it's always been there, but it was starting to get a lot of extent, yeah. Uh, well, and I think for the most part, it was like the, it was really more than anything. I would say like the rat rod stuff. Yeah, that, that's when. So when it really started, and I'll get to that in here in just a second. So I go set up at this show. And here's, like I said, my parents dropped me off in the morning. They go to work. I'm here with a buddy mm -hmm. and we're, I'm like literally just pretty much giving shit away. Like, I mean, it was, the stuff was just like, it was garbage pinstriping, but it's just like, oh, here's this 15 year old kid set up in this swap meet, basically. You know, what do you want for that? Or, you know, how much to pinstripe this? And I'm like, dude, I don't care. Like, give me, you know, throw me 10 bucks. Like, yeah, I'll pinstripe this. And so I ended up making like two, $300 at that first show and I'm like holy crap like I'm gonna do it again next weekend and that's what I did and then I do it again do it again and uh then you know all of a sudden I go to a show and I made like seven hundred dollars and I'm like like dude I'm like freaking making bank and like I said yeah. I'm 15 years old so um now that first show that I did was put on by Rat Rod Magazine and these dudes had just started in a town about 15 20 minutes away from me so I show up and I'm like, oh, cool. Like, you know, you guys yeah. are Rat Rod Magazine. Like, you know, I'm, yeah. And it, like, literally, they started that same year. So it was like their second show that they ever did. Well, then all of a sudden, they got a huge following on Facebook. Yeah. And that's when Facebook didn't have all the, you know, the bullshit algorithms and everything yeah, like yeah. that. So anything that they posted would actually go out. Go somewhere. Yeah. And so they started sharing all my stuff. And all of a sudden, like my Facebook page, like little by little, like started to grow. And I was doing like, you know, toolboxes and all this other just random stuff. Um, uh, pinstripe rat rod tools, hot rod tools. And like, so in that whole local area in Minnesota, I, over a period of like two years, it just blew up for me where I was just doing nothing but hot rods. And like, oh yeah, you can go talk to the kid over there, Roach. And like, yeah, he'll do, you know. Yeah, and your name's yeah. cool too. So it makes it a. Uh, it worked it, out. Everybody yeah. remembers that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, like, it was just, it was super cool. Um, yeah. Like the whole little progression. I mean, like I remember I'd go to a show and I wouldn't do anything or you would make like five or 10 bucks. And it's like, all right, well, try again next weekend. Like I never yeah. gave up on it. Um, and it was just, it was awesome. Um, so were you using like one shot paint? Was yeah. That the, yeah. Yeah. So I used one shot and I was using, you know, Kafka brushes and, um, like then a little later down the road, I started using Max and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, like I said, it's just, so, and then, like I said, the whole thing I did is just try to make some extra money so I can finish my car. And by the time I was 16, I finished my car. Plus I bought a truck and I had another car. Like I was just, like, I was just, yeah. It's, it's a just, good hustle though, man, because it's like, it's a, especially then, man. Like I, I remember that too, because here in, in Dallas, we have this show called the invasion. Okay. Yep. And it's been around for quite a while and it's kind of a rat rod or just a old school hot rod right. kind of rockabilly vibe. Yeah. I got a lot of friends that come yeah. down to it. And uh, I remember being there like probably 2007 or eight and i went down there and set up a booth you know because okay. at this time i'm you know only a couple years into custom paint um and i remember setting up next to that dude scratch from scratch's garage so it's funny because he's the guy that i saw pinstriping on tv, the TV when yeah. my dad's like hey you should try that it's crazy yeah. he's not really like revered as a great pinstriper <laughs> in <laughs> right. the world well dude when i, I yeah I, yeah well just say the yeah. same thing like I, i'm pinstriping next to him and you know, he's out there, he's whipping out, you know, frames and fucking this and striping anything. He's just fucking hustling and making money. And yeah. I'm like, I saw that. And I was like, fuck, man. Like, I just never invested that much time into pinstriping like that. And, like, we've been talking last yesterday in the day, and it's like, there's so much money, I think. And it could be just because I'm not in it like the way you are. I just feel like there's so much faster money that way. You know what I mean? I mean, it's a quick, easy, you know, yeah, like usually, usually um, yeah. yeah I mean like it's definitely not the amount of time that like I have patience for it but I don't have the patience I feel like to do like what you're doing you know mm -hmm. if you know like if I paint something 
And then, like, I'll literally be like, okay, like, come on, like, let's go. Like, I want to just go to the next step. And it's yeah. like, is this paint still wet? I'll be putting my finger in it and, like, you know, yeah. fucking it up. Because, like, that's just, you know, like, I, I don't have the mean. patience to, you know, that's do a bunch I've of graphics, always... spray clear on a helmet, and then let it sit there. And it's like, okay, now, like, now Tomorrow. what do I do? You know? yeah. yeah. So that's why I've always used a House of Color pinstriping paint because I also don't have that patience. Yeah. You know uh, I suppose. I mean? Yep. So I would use House of right Color away. and then you can clear right away. You can stripe over it in a few minutes. You know, yeah. it dries fairly quickly but i wish that i would have learned through one shot because even learning that paint is a is a it's, time yeah thing. so for instance like when i use house of color uh it's definitely like you got to relearn you know your it's all in the paletting and yeah, like the consistency exactly. of the paint um but you got to relearn it like that second it's like all right like okay i'm working so with different yeah paint so like whenever i'm mixing up uh like say with house of color it, yeah. every all the different pigments kind of stripe differently very true yeah. you know what i mean so but but i know how to manipulate it to make it flow better or less yeah so sometimes you open the pecan and it's perfect right yeah and you stripe with it and then about 10 minutes later it starts to get a little thicker and you gotta drop a little this in there then it gets too thin you gotta let it you know you kind of gotta yeah go the oh, opposite sure. direction absolutely and i just don't know how to do that with one shot because i never so one shot's very similar i would say um but it also you know like i said it depends on the color and stuff like that usually uh and depends on how you know old and fresh the paint is and yeah. stuff like that um but yeah like dude i don't know i just kind of wing it like i just have a couple lacquer thinner sitting there and i'll just go at it yeah, yeah. everybody's like you're thinning with lacquer thinner i'm like oh that's what i do <laughs> like it just it dries a lot quicker yeah uh, and it bites into the clear harder is from like what i yeah because that reactivates the clear a little bit in a sense um so the lacquer thinner for does. me um but then as far as like house of color obviously you just use their reducer or whatever yeah i i man it's or every year kind of you know because what i like what about your story and i'm not saying your story like oh your little story i <laughs> know i'm saying about your your growth in this is like the is the evidence of putting in time and, and building skill along with it you know because in this day and age, a lot of people fall in love with the idea of being at your level now as a striper or at my level now as a custom painter or mm -hmm. as a metal fab down the street. Right. All these people they see now with these skills, but there wasn't an Instagram in 2004 or 2010 for this shit to be right in your face all yeah. day long, right? So it's like it took years to build up to this point. It's still taking years to get to that next level. And, um, man, if I, 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 I tell myself all the time, if I just – pulled a few lines a day just a yeah. few even if it's only like 30 minutes a day after six months i will be better at it right. after two weeks i'll be right. better and at that's it. the conversation we had last night you yeah know? and it's the um, same thing with airbrush it's the same thing with everything right that yeah. if you just see and it. i think that was the thing is like when i literally after school every single day i was just sitting in the garage just pinstriping you know doodling on random things and then at school i would be drawing designs on all the homework yeah, and everything yeah. it's like okay that's kind of cool like i'm gonna try that tonight that's cool like, man i wish i would have done that but, as a kid um man. yeah i don't know like i just enjoyed it i just never kind of gave up on it because i don't know like there's just something about it that like i i really wanted i don't know um, well it was also like you know because we've talked quite a bit about many different things since you've been here but you know we both are in the same boat where we look at the art that we create as work right Right. True. Not that we don't enjoy it or love it, but at the end of the day, like this is the means to eat and pay rent yeah. and have clothes and do this and do that. Yeah. So, you know, like I, I don't know, man, like I, I think that I don't even know where I'm going with this. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like your, your, your like path growing up through this is pretty awesome. So by the time you graduated high school, like what was the vibe with your, did you already know for sure? Like you were going to go into the next no. level of this? Um, or? So I was working at the golf cart shop still, and it was basically just me, my mom and my dad that were working there. And we had like one employee that was kind of, you know, part-time he'd come in, uh, do like mechanic stuff. So I was pretty much doing everything. Um, and then it got to the point where like working for family kind of sucks. Like yeah. it's just, you know, um, not only like is any problem at work is problem at home like you know that type of thing and then they expect more out of you like it's just it's one of those things you talk to anybody that works with family like they all know exactly what you're talking about and i was always into like i really enjoyed metal fabrication mm -hmm. um so anything you know welding or um you know like just taking something and making some, something out of metal 
So a buddy of mine down the street, he had like a hot rod, hot rod or hot rod, like uh, race car shop. Mm -hmm. And he had, he's like, Hey, you know, if you ever want to come help me, you know, let me know. Like I really need somebody. Well, it got to the point where like me and my parents got into a big argument at work one day and I was just like, you know what? I'm out. Like I literally walked out, went and drove down to this mm -hmm. hot rod shop and I'm like, Hey, you still hiring? For, you know? And this was on like a Friday or Saturday. And he's like, yep. And I'm like, I'm looking for a job. He's like, all right, first thing Monday morning, be here. And I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, cool. So I did that for about a year and a half to two years. Um, and that was, let's see. So I would have been, I think I was like 20, 19 or 20 when I started working there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I enjoyed it. Like we, I was building full tube chassis to roll cages, everything. And um, like, I, I just had a lot of fun. I mean, like, yeah, I, I really, really liked it, you know, uh, putting, you know, big ass wheel tubs in cars yeah. and everything. And the guy that owned the shop was very, very, very picky about, you know, like the way the quality yeah. of the work that was at the shop. So like, you know, it's just here, you got to have patience to do this. And like, you know, and he knew that I kind of had it as far as that type of stuff goes. Cause I like, you know, if like, I don't have the patience to watch clear dry, let's put it that yeah. way, you know, but if, you know, if I can actually work with something and, you know, do it like, dude, I love like, so, um, I learned how to TIG weld and do everything at that shop. And like I said, um, we were building six, seven second drag car, um, chassis, chassis cages, I mean, everything. So it was, it was a good time, but probably about a year into it, um, there was a, maybe not quite even that there was a shop right next door. It used to be an old barber shop and it, he had bought that. Uh, the owner of this place uh, that I was working for. And I'm like, what are you gonna do with that? He's like, well, I don't know. He's like, I'm probably gonna rent it out. I'm like, well, that'd be cool. Like, I'd like to have a little shop. And it was it was small. It was probably like 500 square feet, okay? Yeah. Like, I mean, it was, it was small. small. Was like maybe two, three times the size of this room that we're in right now. Yeah. And I kind of changed it all up. There was a garage door in the front um, that they put in there. So I, um, I could put my truck in there. Uh, I have a 40 Ford pickup. Um, and like I had a couple bikes in there and stuff like that. And then I would just work out of there on all my customer stuff. But I would go to work at the hot rod shop for, you know, eight to 10 hours a day. Usually we were doing like four tens. And then after that, I'd go next door and pinstripe stuff. And it got to the point where I was doing way more pinstripe like you know on wednesday i would make more money than i would like during the full two weeks of yeah. you know working at like that type of thing you know like but it depends on again it depends on what down. i'm doing yeah. yeah exactly but it's just like you know i think i make more money doing pinstriping if i focused on it more than i could working at the shop so um i kind of wanted this like wanted to slowly start getting out of the hot rod shop and then uh, i think 2017 I always wanted to do Sturgis. So we go to Sturgis and it, I brought a buddy with, I never thought it was going to be what it was. Like I uh, saved up money for, you know, booth space, pretty much paid on it all yeah. year and went there and we freaking killed it. Like it was, but it was the first rally I ever did. Um, Where are you set up at? Corner of 4th and Main, my same spot that I have now. This year? Okay. Yeah. So, How much was that, that booth rent then, or that space rent? It was. It's the same. same. Like, I mean, like it's almost ten grand. Yeah. So I don't think people understand that. So like, let's let's before you go too far in the story, let's talk about like what it actually costs for some of these vendors to be at these rallies. It, dude, it's stupid. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous at at some of the rallies. Yeah. Yeah. So it's um, like, uh, I know that you. Like, I mean, ten grand. Like you, you. Just to wrap your head around that, like, fuck, I'm gonna to do a $10,000 investment yeah, to and be here for two weeks, right? Or is it three weeks? It's 12 days. 12 days. Um, so part of that is my bending permit, um, which is good for 12 days. Yeah. Uh, so I can only work 12 days. So depending on what day I start, that's like, you got to figure out what day you're going to end start, on. And yeah. then, um, but yeah, like I said, so we go there and it's just like absolutely killed it. I ended up buying a motorcycle when I was out there. Cause like it was I actually bought, well, pretty much my first complete Harley that I bought. Uh, cause I had a little bobber project that I was working on. Yeah. Um, it was like old sporty, but, um, uh, I bought a road King out there from, uh, like a Harley dealer. Cause I was yeah. like, screw it. I got all this money. Like why not? Yeah. <laughs> it was like old five road King, but, um, 
yeah, like so I did that, and then um, I wanted to do Biketoberfest, so I left, uh, basically hopped in my F one fifty, drove down to Daytona, and it was okay, like it wasn't all that great, um, and it did Panama City, and went home, and I'm like, this is is fun, like I enjoyed it, but um, like I said, that was 2017, so right at the beginning of 2018, I told my boss, I'm like, dude, I think I'm going to quit and I'm going to just hit the road doing rallies. Mm -hmm. Like, I think I can make money doing it. And, uh, he's like, all right, like best of luck, you know? Yeah. And yeah. And it's been kind of, so the, the, you know, like you, you had a good statement earlier where like the rally, a lot of the rallies on more of the Eastern coast is kind of like a circus. Oh, for sure. And like, and at first I didn't really see it that way. Like I was like, okay, I set up at a place. It's like, you know, you're with a bunch of people. And then next thing you know, you go to a next place and different layout, but it's the same people. And then you go to another place and then all of a sudden you realize that it's one weekend after another weekend, after another weekend, it's just like perfect route that they have these all planned out just perfectly. And then you see like some of these, you know, clothing vendors where it is literally like straight carnies. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, like I said, this year we had a Ferris wheel at Sturgis. Sturgis Come on. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it just, but it's funny you cake. say that because, like, in, in downtown Waxahachie, there's this place called The Shop, right? Okay. And apparently the lady that owns the place used to do the circuit and de- decided to do, a, a, a you know, a structure instead of okay. traveling. But apparently she used to, uh, you know, be all over the place, Sturgis, yeah. you know, all these rallies. And... You know, it's kind of, it's crazy because I remember when I was younger, I had a booth uh, at Rot Rally and we okay. were there and I was thinking like, oh, I'm gonna go to Rot Rally and get all this work. Well, the problem was there was a dude a few down, a few booths down actually painting motorcycles <laughs> at Rot Rally. Like, trust me, it wasn't good shit. But, you know, and I'm just trying to sell paint for later on. So they would come up like, well, can can I bring the bike over here and you can do this flame job on it real quick? I said, well, I can't do it here. He goes, oh, well, they're doing it down there. I'm like, seriously? And you like look down, they got a compressor, they got this like homemade tent yeah. thing with plastic up. And I'm like, wow. Sweet. But I was sitting, I was, I was vending next door to a, or next to a, uh, a seat guy that did the okay. same thing. And I started to realize like those LEDs, yep. those seats and stripers in the clothing, the leather and the, yep. those, dude, just, there's like usually 10, 10 or 15 of the same people at all these, especially yep. the bigger ones. And they just travel, and they're, that's what they're doing. Like, oh man, I'm on the road. I'm doing seats everywhere, yeah. picking up skins. You know, you know, shaving foam, and most of the recovering the seats. They're not right. like making. Oh them, yeah, you know. But it's so crazy how like that that ecosystem. Is yeah, there. and then like especially, and then you look at like you know the guys that are doing LEDs. Yeah. Know? So five years ago, you go to Sturgis, and or like the first year that it, you walk down, um, like you know, uh, Lazelle. It's like you see like there'd be like two LED guys. Next year, there was like five LED guys. And now you walk down Lazelle and it's literally every single corner, every other booth is an LED dude. Yeah. Um, but I think that stuff's getting like so played out um, yeah, yeah. that it's just like at this last place, you know, I was in Panama City here last weekend and at the same venue, there was five LED guys. They were all doing the same thing. Yeah. I'm like, dude, how do you guys make money with competition? Like, I mean, that's especially with the amount of money that you already spend to be here. like. Dude, it's, I don't know, like it's, it's insane, crazy. Man. Yeah, because it's one of those things like anybody can do it. Yeah. Um, you know, there's definitely some vendors that do it nicer than the others. I mean, mm-hmm. like I definitely have a few, if, if you want LEDs, I'll send you to, yeah, so you know, so-and-so. Because there's times where you literally like once in a while I have to pull a seat off of a bike and you pull the seat off and it's just like, you know, it's kind of like a slinky. The thing just kind of just jumps out everywhere and you know, it's nothing but just a bunch of wires. And yeah. then you go try to put the seat back on and it doesn't fit. Like, it's a shit show, man. Oh, for sure. Like some yeah. of these places, it's yeah, it's crazy, man. That's just I don't know. There, there's to me, it's like I wish that 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 would have been the funnest part about it for me because I love the traveling aspect and I love that whole. That would be the closest feeling to being like in a band hitting the road <laughs> to the next show kind of vibe. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so you get like when you do this whole circuit, like what is like when does it start and when does it end for you? So um, my first show is always Daytona. And then after that, usually I have like roughly three to four week break. Um, so I got March, April. Um, so right in April, usually like in the middle of it kind of starts. 
and then ends in July. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I do April, May, June, July, and then I have a little bit of a break again, and then it starts off with Sturgis and pretty much ends right about now. Usually Galveston's like the last one of the year that mm -hmm. I do, um, November, you know. Yeah. But uh, like, I, like I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. So you only really bring Kyle on to help out with the bigger events? At the bigger ones, yeah. yeah. So he'll do like Daytona, he'll do Myrtle Beach with me, uh, Sturgis obviously, and then uh, I've been trying to get him to come to a few more here and there, but a lot of them are, it's, I can deal with the people, um, and not only that, like, I mean, just some of them, it's, you know, smaller cities, like it's just kind of the logistics of having him fly out and- yeah, being able to get them from yeah, the airport, yeah. Yeah, and plus he's got, enough stuff going on at home so yeah. but all these damn frenchies right exactly <laughs> which he still got that one for sale and like he's got he's one like, for sale dude he's those, got, those he's dogs got, cost too much man i know they do but he's like you know i think he sent me a message the other day he's like man it's meant to be like you know you need a you need a dog on the road i'm like uh no frenchie would be a pain in the ass to have on the road though you think dude there's a lot of vendors that actually have frenchies dude? on the road yeah i don't know i guess every time i've been around frenchies they're always wild yeah, there, I've seen them both ways, you know. Yeah, not wild yeah. like uh, fuck up things, but just just everywhere. Yeah. Just, you know, like got a lot of energy. You know yeah. what I mean? But not a lot of limbs to get it right. out. <laughs> right. But no, that's a uh, that's cool. Like the day I was there, the night before, yeah. is when the, when the they, puppies yeah, came that's out. Right. Yeah. So they were all you know little bitty little right. bitty little fucking beans is what they look like. Um, but no, that's cool. I, I would have loved to have been able to like just chase that for a couple of years maybe not be my life chasing rallies yeah. like that but the experience man like that's a that's a different take on the motorcycle culture that you know like most of us will never know because we're on the other side of it yeah you got any wild stories like Dude, like I, this stands out like the, oh for sure so I, I do want to do a series like you and kyle just talking about like stories from the rallies so but like for instance, give us one. First year, Sturgis. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, my booth is corner of Fourth and Main, and there's this guy that he comes in right after we set up, um, and he's like a patch guy. We call him yeah. Patches. So, Patches is here. He's duct taping carports together. Like, I mean, you know, he's got like the uh, the Home Depot, you know, like slip together, you know, just ghetto tent. Yeah. And he's literally duct taping this thing. He's got wiring everywhere. Like, I mean, dude, the thing is just, it's horrid. And I'm like, great. Like, holy crap. Like it's, it's not like a flea market setup. It's worse. Yeah. And we put up like a wall, um, in between us and I had four bikes in the booth and I was, you know, striping. And like I said, he's right beside me. And all of a sudden I hear this crash and it's like, dude, the thing goes on for like six, seven seconds. And like, I just, it's, you just hear stuff breaking. Wow. And I like, I turn around, I, you know, I kind of look around, everybody is looking at the booth next to me and I'm like, what the hell happened? Like, so I get up off the ground and I, you know, I stand up and I look over there and this whole booth, there's probably nine to 10 tables in the center of it normally where he's got all his stuff laid up. It's in a big pile. And I'm like, dude, like, what happened? Like, I couldn't figure it out because everything was just destroyed in this whole booth. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I see a set of handlebars sticking out of the center of this big pile. And this dude's running, like, comes up running up kind of from, like, behind me. He's like, oh, man, like, my bike, it's fucked. Turns out what he was doing, so he was, um, like, on the... He was on Main Street, but he was heading like towards the crowd, you know, yeah. um, probably like three, four blocks down the street. And he was surfing his bike. So he was standing on the seat going like 30, 40 miles an hour and he fell off. But wow. the bike just kept on going. So the bike's going down the street <laughs> with nobody on it. And it slowly starts veering to the left a little bit, takes a driveway approach absolutely perfectly and literally runs into this guy's booth. Dude, it was like the like wow. it's just amazing and if it would have went like another 10 feet it would have took out the four bikes yeah. that were sitting in, in my booth yeah so how did like so, how did that play out for that okay dude? so he get, like they help him get the bike out and the guy's clear clearly drunk and they push the bike out onto the sidewalk now keep in mind the police station's right across the street so all of a sudden like the first thing is everybody wants to call the police and he's like oh don't call the police you know just just wait you know he's like I, i'll pay for everything now 
again, the guy sells patches. He didn't lose anything other than maybe like a broken table or two. Yeah. And, uh, and then he had to spend like maybe an hour cleaning up his whole booth. But, um, He's like, I'm so sorry. I'm going to, I'll pay you. Like, you just tell me what you need. And the whole time he's like waving his hands in the air. And as he's talking, he takes his hands and sets them on his handlebars, like real quick, just pulls in the clutch, hits the start button and like flies away like freaking Superman. Like, dude, it was <laughs> hilarious. So he's just, he's talking to him and he's like, you know, really emphasizing with his hands, just kind of waving them up in the air. And all of a sudden he just sets his hands on the bars and he just gone. Dips out. Yeah. It's like, fuck dude, you. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, dude, that guy better not show up in Sturgis. Wow. Cause like, I mean, there's, there was people looking for him at that point, you know? Um, that would suck, man. Fortunately, it was just patches. Like, right, what if exactly. it was like well, breakables so and shit? Well, so here's the thing. So similar story. Um, so that was, like I said, I, so I do um, Sturgis, and then I go to Daytona, and then, like, that was a whole nother shit show. We stayed at a haunted hotel that I didn't know was haunted, and turns out, like, one of the people in the room that we stayed in ended up, like, killing themselves, like, 20-some years ago. Nice. And, yeah, dude, like, if... Like I said, that's Weird. that's a whole nother story. Um, but so it's like that was pretty interesting. And then I go to Daytona in the spring of so 2018 then. And I was set up next to Motor Trike, the guy that I was actually telling you about yesterday. Yeah. He's from Texas, you know. I went and visited him yesterday. And uh, that's kind of like how we became friends was we were set up right next to each other. So we're set up on Beach Street in Daytona. And... At like two o'clock in the morning on St. Patrick's Day, I hear this big crash and I'm like, what the hell was that? And I look out the window and here's this, like everything looked normal except there was a Jeep that was parked very, very close to um, Motor Trike's semi. And I'm like, that thing wasn't there before. And I'm looking and his whole awning is like folded down on one side and I step outside and all of a sudden there's this drunk dude that's walking around his Jeep, hitting, like pounding on the semi, like, you know, hello, hello, is anybody in there? That type of thing. And me and Jeff, the owner, were the only ones that were staying on that lot. Um, so all of a sudden he turns on all of his lights, like opens up the door and the dude, according to the police report, he was going like 50, 55 miles an hour cranked hard left jumped the curb took out three bike or no i think it was two bikes in the booth and then the like he hit one of the bikes so hard that the thing um uh, like flew up against his truck and trailer popped the tire on the semi and then took his whole awning and literally like bent it in because uh mm -hmm. what they do at night is they would tie down their like i mean this is one of those nice aero awnings i mean the awning is probably yeah. like 20 grand or more uh and it bent it in with everything like there was over a hundred grand worth of damage wow. uh without including this dude's jeep so i was like if that guy literally would have done that a split second sooner he would have drove right through my camper and everything that you know was sitting there um so like it was just it's crazy but the next morning it's like jeff like dude i'm so sorry he's like no he's like it was a great night we sold two units last night he's like insurance is paying out like, you know in full and like i suppose like yeah you know so that's wild though man like you, you know it's kind of like when you if you go sit at walmart and you stay in the same spot all day and just people watch yeah you're gonna see some fucked up shit is that what you do like in your free time yeah i mean pretty much that's all we have to do for fun in this okay. side of town but that's kind of the same concept if you're in the same spot all day long at a rally yeah you're going to see some fucking oh, dude, shit happen. For sure. I mean, like, and Sturgis is probably, like, one of the best for those. Um, like, we see people constantly drop their bikes right in that intersection. Mm -hmm. I've had people get arrested uh, right in front of my booth. Uh, last year at Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue, there was a lady that got carried out in a stretcher out of our booth because she got hit by a motorcycle. Um, like, dude, it's just, yeah, it's crazy. It's wild. Um, that would, I mean, I've yeah. had vendors next to me start on fire. Um <laughs> Like, and like legit fire where they had, you know, call the fire truck and everything in Myrtle. So it was, it was weird because like, it was over like four rallies that I did. I had all these things happen. So, yeah. you know, like I said, so I, you had my surge story. Then I go to Daytona in the spring and the Jeep takes out that booth. And then after that, I go to um, Panama city and then I go to Myrtle beach and these hillbillies they were being like, like they were a food vendor or something like that they ended up getting shut down the first day because of 
like I don't know, bring in cooked food from like four hours away or something like that. And then uh, <laughs> the health inspector wouldn't even pass their trailer. So what they did is they brought in a brand spanking new trailer, and we were completely underpowered at that show. Like nobody had enough outlets to plug yeah. into. So all of a sudden, it was like 90 degrees outside, and I'm sitting there, everybody's shutting down, and my fan turns off in the booth, and I'm like, I look over, and here's these dudes running out, like, extension cord after extension cord to the same outlet, and they put, like, a three-into-one splitter in there, and they're trying to literally, like, try to launch a rocket, you know? They, <laughs> and uh, they keep blowing the breakers. Well, at that point, the Harley dealer was already closed down. Yeah. So I'm like... All right, you know, whatever. I went and plugged into somebody else's, um, like one of the dudes had like a 50 amp service. I plugged into him and then uh, I go inside, come back out and they had a generator that was on the front of their trailer. I'm like, all right, like, well, these dudes could have just ran the generator, you know, yeah, no. easier. So keep in mind, brand new trailer, never been used, just got on that lot like a half hour ago. And I'm sitting there having a drink on the tailgate of my truck and I look over and like the thing starts sputtering a little bit and then it just boom, like just turns off. But it was like just a big backfire. And I'm like, huh, suckers. Like, you know, that's what you, it, the guys were just absolute assholes. Yeah, they're not proven. You know, when I went out, approached them, like, dude, you just, you know, trip the breaker. There's nobody inside here. There's an outlet over here for you to use. And you're putting three into one splitter on ours and everybody's trying to like, they're like, fuck off, man. And I'm like, Okay, you know what? Screw you guys. Like, yeah. So, anyways, I'm like, I'm kind of laughing about it. I'm like, ah, your generator just took a shit. And all of a sudden, I see like a little bit of white smoke coming out. And then it's just black smoke. And I hear like tick, tick, like metals getting hot. Yeah. And then the whole thing just whoosh. The, the whole brand thing new just, trailer? Brand new trailer just starts on the generator started that whole thing on fire. Dude. Yeah. So like I was Did just they come from West Virginia. Uh, no, they were like in the hills of North Carolina. <laughs> oh, yeah, so yeah, just pretty close. Bad. But yeah, that sucks, man. Like um, I I couldn't imagine dealing with that because, like you said, it is kind of like a carny vibe. Oh, for sure, dude. And some of these dudes are just kind of like extra as fuck, man. Like uh huh. The testosterone on some of these hillbilly, hillbillies is fucking insane. I, I've been around it, you know, just being in the bike culture and shit. And it's like, fuck, man. Like, yeah, I you just couldn't definitely deal with figure it. out like who to hang out to hang out with and uh there's a lot of guys that do this like the thing um where like you know if i have to live like a carny doing this i'm not gonna do it anymore so like you know we go out to eat every night and like you yeah, know either yeah. so for instance i stay in my coach um i save a lot of money on hotel rooms that way but like a lot of these guys you know they're getting hotel rooms and stuff like that they're not sleeping in their tent or in yeah. their little five by ten trailer you well, know it's like on a the cot. big ones like so your your clockworks and your like covington that when they set up at a at um uh black hills harley yeah. and stuff and, and daytona like they rent a house for the, right. the crew same thing with D D. yeah a lot so of guys a lot of guys a lot do of that. bigger companies yeah. like that but like those are more like companies in the motorcycle industry that are coming versus the people that chase the rallies right right so, so it's like for instance like uh my buddy paul you know fairing exchange like he takes care of his dudes and mm -hmm. you know he's always renting houses and um either that or getting hotels but like um there's a lot of the guys that they literally do nothing but like sleep on a cot in a trailer and it's like dude, what, you so the fairing exchange is basically like you come and bring your road glide and he'll have a factory inner already painted correct and swap yeah. them out for yeah. you road glide and it's like giving the core to right? yeah so it's, it's an exchange program so you know when you buy a new bike um like it's black interfering um and then he'll have one that's you know let's say I don't know, like the new superior color. blue yeah, or something yeah, like sure. that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so he'll have one that's superior blue, and he'll take your old one off, and he'll put a superior blue one on. And, you and like he's, match. dude, he's got a pretty sweet operation going that's on. That's a good one, though. Yeah. That's a really, I mean, especially for the, the bagger crowd, because that's one of the things that we used to make a lot of money doing that as well on the older road glides. Yeah. But then the new ones, there's so many pieces to it that it's not very profitable anymore. Well, for at least I a, feel like, I, f I don't know if, because they're doing like, there's like, it's like a 12 different piece thing. Like, I mean, they're doing the whole thing around the, um, the, the steering, like the, the gauge cluster and yeah. like the whole, th I don't know, whatever you want to call yeah, it. So that you drops have the, down. Uh, the nacelle. Yeah. Cap, and then you have the, like on a road glide, you have the new, the, the inner, the doors. Yep. The, and then you have the top piece. And the top piece. Yeah. And then you have the, 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 the complete cap that's around yeah. the um 
that the nacelle. So no, that nacelle piece is technically four parts. Right. So, right. So then four with fairings, five plus two glove box doors, you know, six, so we seven, to, eight. When the dealerships yeah. here back in the day, they would hit us up and go, hey, we need, uh, we have three fairings. They all need to be gloss black. And it's like on the street glides, I think we charged 300 bucks for okay. those. And then on the road glides was 500. Yeah. On the old style. Yeah. On the new style, like, I mean, depending on who you are, where you're at and what it costs to paint and, you know, what you charge, man, I wouldn't want to do that shit for $500. No, that's no a, like, and that's the thing. Like, I mean, it's, it's the it's, hardest thing to paint. There's so many angles. Right. It's like, and you always get a run right in the fucking gauge <laughs> right, hole. Right, yeah. You know? And that, and like, and that's just it. So he's got dudes at home or, you know, back in Florida that, I don't know, that's, that's all they do is literally yeah. just paint fairings all day long. It's smart. Yeah. It's a good deal. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I mean, dude. Can you imagine the amount of fairings that you'd have to have to like have every single color? Yeah, at least like, ten of each color, almost. Well, or 40. I, don't, I don't know about like it's. I don't think it's necessarily that because like you know you get the guy that's whether you got a street glide or a road glide. I don't know. I think he's usually got you know a few co few of each color on hand, then he'll like send them out or whatever. But he's got like four hundred and some fairings on hand that he runs through rotation, wow. and I'm like, wow, like that's crazy. That's a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's a good hustle, though. I mean, so he's like one of my buddies that I just kind of travel. Yeah. That's why I'm in Dallas, you know. So who's the guy that does the fiberglass stuff? Like, what does he just make all kinds of different things? He, uh, well, it's motor trike. Is okay. he's, he's a trike conversion That's guy, right. and not That's necessarily, right. you know, for this podcast, it's not like uh, unless you're, you know, getting like 60, 70 years old and you want a yeah, trike, you need to, you know, you need that third wheel. Yeah, unless you buy one of those automatic Hondas, man, there the gold go. wings. Well, I heard uh, India needs some gold wing support, so yeah, some. They they do. <laughs> Was it hate that? We hadn't even talked about it. And your we, your no. performance bagger got too, which is awesome because you know yeah, um, I'm getting there. Man, you're there, dude. You're you're I mean you did the you hung out I mean you've been hanging out with all of us, Daniel. I mean you did the whole deal to LA with, with Kyle and Daniel and stuff, right? When y'all went to Big Bear. Yeah. And rented the bikes yep. and rode around. Yeah, rented Is them. your first time riding around in California? It was. How'd you like it? Uh I loved it. Like uh -huh. other than we were on just some pile of shit trash bikes but soft we, tails yeah we got the yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> low riders <laughs> low riders yeah like it was just it was funny because like all of them were the same color and everything so here's four dudes you know yeah. on the same exact bikes and like dude, dude i don't dudes. know it's just it was so uncomfortable but yeah um, they're like four bikes they're not dialed in for you like no you know what i mean like it's just funny like you know we rode up to um we went to big bear and then um, like checked out his shop and everything. And then after that, we went up the mountain mm -hmm. and like we, um, literally just roll into the like little restaurant. There's snow on the ground and everything. And it's just like, everybody like looks at us like, who the, like, who are these Some guys? Wild hogs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's exactly what it looked like. It was just, it was hilarious. That's cool but, to like do that. Like, it's not a bad idea, but uh, like, I feel like a low rider is going to come with such an uncomfortable setup with like real low bars. Oh like, yeah, you're not. It's, it's not set yeah. up for anything. Yeah, like, forward controls. The seats suck. Oh like, yeah, dude, that that blow. At least like on a road glide or something, you'd still have at least high enough bars, so you're not like yeah, super, you know, all the way leaning forward, looking like a parachute going down the road and shit. But yeah, it was it was, it was a great time though out there. Um, so what what kind of inspired you to build the first or this current well, one that you so, have? So, and I think Kyle uh, might have briefly mentioned this in the uh, in his podcast, but. I got Kyle to come with to Daytona. Um, this was 2019. Yeah. And so I had a that 05 Road King that I was telling you about, um, with like that I bought in Sturgis. Um, it was just kind of a semi choloed out. Like it was big, heavy metal flake root beer brown with gold leaf and 18 inch mm -hmm. shapes on it. Um, so I go pick Kyle up. Like I've never, I've talked to him before. I met him a few times at SEMA. That's kind of how we met. But I never really hung out with the dude. Like, I don't really know anything about him. And uh, get to his place, and here he pulls out his Road King. And I'm like, all right. Like, and I straight off the bat told him, like, dude, like, I don't really, like, I'm not a fan. Like, you know, I don't really care for it all that much. Uh, it's just, like, it's just weird to me. Like, and I think it's just one of those things. Like, you know how when you see, like, the new prototypes or, like, the new cars come out, and it's like, man, yeah. that thing is ugly. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, is like, you just it grows love it. You. Yeah. yeah. So we get to Daytona, we unload it, and I'm kind of looking at it. I'm like, I think it's kind of cool because it's, you know, it's like a sport bike, but you took a grandpa bike and, you know, yeah. like whatever, you know. And then I need to get a battery for my bike. So he's like, oh, I'll just take mine. So I literally took his bike and I 
at that point, I think all I did is I just rode around the parking lot. I'm like, dude, this thing is awesome. Yeah. And then a few days later, uh, Daniel showed up and he's, you know, I did some pinstriping on his bike. Um, we just did some like, you know, racy hockey stick style stripes. Yeah. He's like, Hey, you want to take my bike for a spin? Cause I told him, I was like, I want a road glide. I wanted that, you know, for my next bike. And he's like, dude, here, you know, hop on my bike, take it down the street. And that was, and that was last year. Right. And that's cause, that was cause last Kyle had year. just yep. built that bike. Yep. And, um, I remember Daniel went down and there was a, there was a pretty good sized crowd. Like he did like a, a meet and greet or something like that. Yeah, I think, I think so. Uh, at like, um, it was like target or yeah, so, coffee shops or something like that. Yeah, or probably whatever. that's what, um, ride to coffee kind of vibes. So, yeah. So Daniel lets me ride his bike and I like, I'm like, all right, I'm in love with it. Like, this yeah. is awesome. Um, and that's what I wanted to do. So then come August, I bought a Bonneville salt road glide and just little by little started doing a few things to it over the fall, uh, when I was traveling last year. And then in the winter, I just went nuts mm -hmm. um and did everything i did a full frame up build on it you know yeah so and then it fell over and then it <laughs> fell over yep yep thanks for reminding me <laughs> Just and, you know, that, that whole deal ended up working out uh yeah. somebody, somebody bumped into it though right so or something like what that. happened was is, so i it was a last minute deal on that bike. like i mean i was just trying to get it done for daytona yeah so i didn't plan on doing a full frame up build um, I was just going to do, you know, do some paint work, do, you know, wheels and a few other things. And like, I wasn't going to yeah. uh, do everything. And then next thing you know, is I get peer pressured by a bunch of people to like, Hey man, you should just powder coat your frame while you're at it. All right, great. So that's yeah. what I did. And then I'm running all my wiring through the frame and like all my, you know, brake lines and clutch lines and everything. It's like just trying to get the thing as clean as possible. And then, uh, like I said, last minute. Uh, so I had my tank was actually on the last round of clear, like right before I left. And I picked it up that morning. I had the tank with me sitting in the passenger seat of the Roach coach going down to St. Louis, uh, pick up Kyle. We transfer over the fuel pump um, at his place, get to Daytona, throw the tank on it, throw the seat on it, wheeled it out of the truck. And it's the first time that that bike was ever like fully yeah. together. And then uh, pretty much let it sit there. I think I went and got some fuel um, and rode it around the parking lot a little bit just to, you know, like I said, I never got to ride it since I put it yeah. together, make sure that like, you know, work all the quirks out of it if there was any. And then we let it sit that day. The next day we went to the Harley dealer, came back to the track, started setting up. Um, I need to get some stuff at Home Depot. I go to Home Depot, I come back out and the speaker grill was sitting on the seat and the lights were blinking and i'm like okay like that's weird well the thing's got like major gangster lean yeah so i was like maybe it just like fell out or something so i take it and like i go to clip it back in and i look and the fairing on that side was like all fucked up and i'm like what the hell so i walk around to the other side of the bike and it's like the floorboards folded up and the saddlebags all fucked up and the, you know it's the exhaust is scratched the fairings all scratched um and it, i'm like no fucking way like like dude i was just sick to my stomach the thing wasn't even done for 24 hours Damn. and this guy walks out and he's like hey you know i heard somebody hit a motorcycle in the parking lot you know was it is this the one i'm like like i didn't know, even know what to say i'm like yeah uh and he's like somebody was talking about it in the store um and they said they you know they saw some old man hit it and he drove off and i'm like great like yeah. awesome and I, at that point like I, the thing was insured as a stock motorcycle you know so i was like yeah. great like this this sucks because like i didn't even have time to you know bump the insurance up and i call the police the police show up another guy walks out and he's like hey you know i Everybody in the store is talking about a motorcycle got hit. He's like, hey, man, he's like, that sucks. Like, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, nice bike. And then this uh, older guy walks out and he's like, oh, he sees the cop. The cop's inside trying to like, you know, do the paperwork for like the video footage or whatever, because it's always goes through like a third party and all this yeah. bullshit, you know, so the employees can't erase video. Um, so he sees the cop car and he's like, oh, what happened here? And I'm like, uh, some asshole hit my bike and drove away. And he's like, really? He's like, well, that's a bummer. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, oh, it doesn't really look that bad. I'm like, dude, it's pretty bad. And 
he's like, and kind of like, well, what'd that paint job run you? And I'm like, why does it matter? It's like, you know, realistically, I was like, here's the thing. I said, this is like a sixty, seventy thousand dollar build. You know, it's the bags are carbon fiber. Like this saddle bag is, you know, this much. Plus, yeah. I was like, you know, this probably got six, seven thousand dollar paint job on it. He's like, well, on a motorcycle, and I'm like, it's a full custom build, dude. Like that floorboard, you know, it's six hundred and some dollars. Like, you know, it's just like you're naming off these, you know, and. The guy's like, that's absolutely ridiculous. Like, I didn't think a motorcycle would cost that much. And the whole time he's holding his wallet and he keeps like reaching out and like pulling like this gift card out. And the guy was super nice. And I figured he was going to be one of those type of people where we're like, man, like, I'm sorry you had a shitty day. Here's an Applebee's gift card and, you know, go have a beer on me. Yeah. Like, that's how he was. And the cop comes back out and we literally talked for maybe... I don't know, I wanna say between 15 and 30 minutes. Like my timing was all messed up, so I couldn't, you know, I didn't know exactly. But um, we talk, we're talking to the cop and the guy, like the old man, he's just like, all right, well, you guys have a good day. And he walks away. And I think at the same time, the cop says, he's like, usually we can find the vehicle in the parking lot um, cause they don't go too far. And he kind of starts walking around like, you know, up and down the row and he didn't, he's like, I don't know. He's like, I really can't tell. Like, you know, and it, this old man had walked away. He's like three, four rows over and he's rubbing out a scratch on this minivan. So I look at the cop and I'm like, Hey, you know, that's the guy that we were just talking to. I wonder if he like found a, you know, something with, you know, like a scratch or damage on it or whatever they, like you can match up, you know, cause you could tell like what color the yeah, vehicle yeah. was. And, um, so we walk over there and the guy's like, oh, no. I'll just own up to it. It was me. And I'm like, wait, seriously, dude? Like, you just talked to us for like a half hour and you didn't say anything. And now like all of a sudden, and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. He's like, I didn't think it was like that bad. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's, it's bad. So, but dude, his insurance, like they didn't care whatsoever. Like, yeah, that's just, good. Yeah. He didn't, did he get like any kind of legal? Oh yeah. So then it was uh, after like, so the cop, basically the guy walks back into the car and he, he tells the cop, he's like, man, you can just go like, we'll just take care of this. I'm like, no, you're not going anywhere. You're writing up an accident report. And the guy's like, no, we'll take care. I'm like, no, you're writing up an accident report, dude. Like I got way too much on the line right now to lose. Like, yeah. what if I, you know, this guy doesn't have yeah. the money to fix it. And yeah, exactly. you don't have the, the ability so to prove the, uh, he, uh, he writes up a, a report and then he comes over to the cop comes over to me and he's like, Hey, um, uh, can I have a word with you? And I'm like, okay. And I go back behind his car and he's like, I'm going to just, he's like, I'm going to leave this up to you. Do you think I should give him, you know, a citation? And I'm like, you know what? I was like, the dude was super cool. At least he owned up to it. I'll take care of it with this insurance company. At this point, I feel like I got shit karma the way it is. I don't need to fuck somebody else over because yeah. like, just no. And I was like, no, it's not necessary. It's like accidents happen. I get it. Like the dude didn't see the bike. It is what it is at this point. I'm over it. I've been here for like two hours. I just want to go back and yeah. just keep doing what I was doing. And he's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. And he's like, all right. So we walk over back to the guy and he's like, all right. He's like, I left it up to Monty, whether you're going to get a citation or not. And the guy, like his eyes lit up. Like he didn't think that was even, you know, possible. Gonna be, yeah. He's like, if it was up to me, he says, I'd give you a citation for reckless driving, um, which would have been like three points against your driving record. And you would have had to show up to court. Plus the guy was like from like Maryland or something like that. Um, 200 and some dollar fine. And then uh, fleeing the scene of an accident. So there's like three different things that he would have hit him for. And I'm like, damn, like, well, that would have saved sucked, you know? Day. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, that's one of those things. I, like, I'm in the same boat, you know, like, uh, it probably would have pissed me off that he was considering running. Right. But it it's like he, he still had like this moral compass yeah. to keep him there instead of just yep. leaving altogether. Right. If he left, like, he would left and you had to find him another way. Yeah. Definitely, man. Slap all that shit. Oh, on that for sure. Like, but yeah. And see, and I think that was the thing. Like, it, the guy felt so bad about it. And it's just like, you know what, dude, I understand. Like, you're probably old dude, you know, probably thinks it's going to be some like big badass biker that's going to beat the shit out of him or something like that. You that's know? also a thing, man. <laughs> yeah. that, that's a, that's a good point. Yeah. Man, you know, so uh, he, uh, he's like uh, the whole time he, he just wouldn't stop saying how sorry he was. But like I said, it was, dude, it all worked out in the end. I ended up getting some more, you know, parts and like I yeah. ended up getting the carbon fiber outer fairing that I didn't have before. And, um, pretty much fixed everything else like it was, yeah. it was all pretty cheap that's, uh, that's on good. my end so 
Yeah, that uh, I I never get hit with people that have insurance ever. Yeah, I've I've been hit in my in my car before. Um, never have insurance. Cops never do anything to them. You know, it's always it's 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 I always get fucked. I've had people back up into my shit, knock my bike over, peel out. There's video footage, but the cops are too fucking lazy to go get it and do anything with it. And then if they did, the motherfuckers don't have insurance because that's why they ran in the first fucking place. So it's like, I just never, I never get hit by like new Mercedes or anything like yeah. that. Something where I'm like, fuck, man, finally. <laughs> Someone sent me a fucking like, you know, a get out of shitty life free card or some shit, you know? But yeah, I, like, I don't know. I'm, I've only the only two times that I've really had anything. Uh, I've got hit in parking lots twice, the one with the bike, and then uh, there was some drunk dude that ended up hitting, like T-bone my truck pretty much mm. during the winter, and like it literally. Now I don't know if it was like, it slid my truck into another vehicle, and luckily those people were just getting out when it happened because the car drove away, and. Uh, we're like at a bar and I go to like, you know, start my truck, you know, from the window or whatever, like automatic start because mm -hmm. it was cold outside. And the truck's sitting sideways up against another car and I'm like, oh shit. You know, so I walk outside and they're like, dude, is that your truck? And I'm like, yeah. And like those people that are driving away down the highway right there just hit it. Well, then it turns out that there's a cop that was parked on the side of the road and they almost ran into him. So the cop pulled him over and they said that literally like the people would just like they opened up the doors and then just fell because they couldn't even walk because they were so drunk wow yeah so i ended up like that ended up working out too but they have insurance like, yeah knock on wood <laughs> Fucking lucky, dude. that's wild that is that shit's insane man the uh, yeah so the only two times that anything's happened has been in parking lots for me but so how much do you think you got like how many more years do you think you can do the uh, the circuit thing do you Dude, feel so last confident? year i said i wanted to do it for 10 years so okay. now i'm at nine for real we'll, yeah we'll see yeah. what happens that's wild like nine. i just i feel like i don't want to do it for the rest of my life you know i look at some of these other dudes that literally they're like oh i've been doing this since you know fuck you know no, 80s yeah 70s <laughs> and i'm like I don't want to be you. Like, yeah. I really don't. Um, I enjoy it right now, but I don't want to. Like, I feel like just doing that for a lot of time, like, it just it doesn't seem like all that interesting. I mean, like, yeah. some of these guys, like, you know, there's, for instance, uh, another pinstriper that does the same thing, and he's probably in his, like, late 60s, early 70s, um, and he's just doing it just to do it. Like, he's literally, he's doing it, because he has to, I should say. Okay. Like yeah. that was That'd know. be a fun thing to do. Like if you if you did this for another how many more years you you thinking? I'm th dude, if here's the thing. Like it's one of those things that's in you my head know. like yeah. nine years, okay? Like that's what I just tell myself. You know? Yeah. Uh when I'm, you know, thirty four, thirty five years old, I wanna be a, out of it and on to something else. Well, it'd be cool if you started doing something else and you have the same level of success. This would be something that you can always go back and do again later on, just yeah. just oh, as for like sure. a just like you a know, fun thing yeah. to do. And like you know, I wouldn't have to do all the rallies that I'm doing. I could only do you know. One yeah, or two, imagine but. like you, you um, instead of going to work as a Walmart greeter when you get old <laughs> as fuck, you can just go stripe a couple bikes and go. a little shaky lines on there. You gotta like fucking hold your arm to go straight and shit. And it's like, I don't know. I I I, I really need to to take my own advice for people and just start doing something every day and just get get it down because like if i was hanging out with you guys in um in tennessee at the v twin show when you were out there and yeah. all y'all went out there to pipe paint there's a i could stripe something on there oh I could for get sure well, dude you, you know yeah. that wouldn't have been even a question like yeah. you would have been do, doing something on there no matter what but i don't uh, you know i don't i don't have the same confidence in going into striping as all you guys seem to have so i would have well uh, i mean but like then again at that it would have sobered me up real quick um <laughs> We're just out there to fuck shit up. Yeah. Like, that's just. Exactly. Yeah, fuck I up Ben's bike. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it, we did the same thing with Steve's and Poland's. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's just like, oh, this is going to be great. But that to me, that shit's cool. It's like that rear fender on Ben's bike now, to me, would be like an, I hate to use the word heirloom, but it would be something that would never get. So luckily, he's got a carbon fiber one waiting for him at home, and he's going to yeah. take it and hang it up on that's like that's a memory that's like what wall. i'm trying to do in yeah. here is like put memories up so it's like you know all that shit but even like steve's bike like i wouldn't even if steve sold his bike i would keep that rear fender 
forever. I, the rear fender is cool. Yeah. yeah. The rest of it. Yeah. The rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, <laughs> the Dixie no Cup idea is pretty good. But um, like when I visited Poland on this road trip, like as the first stop, and I literally I walk into his shop and here's his bike sitting there, and I didn't think anything of it, and like. He's like, so you notice anything different? I'm like, oh shit, yeah, you took the pinstriping off. He's like, man, he. So I put hardener in all my paint, which yeah. makes it like extremely hard to get off for one shot. Normally, you can just use, you know, easy off and yeah. like it'll kind of flake up and you know. Wipe well, the hardener it off. helps it dry quicker too, right? It does a little bit, yeah. yeah. But like, it, dude, it, the stuff bites in. Mm -hmm. So he's like, man, like. I can still see where it was, like, and literally on the back of the bags, you can still see where all the pinstriping was. Like, he's got to pretty much wet sand and buff that whole thing out. Oh, wow. But uh, he's like, oh, I hated it. And I'm like, yeah, I was like. Why did he just, like, keep it and paint it? Or, or, or I mean, I, I imagine he's going to paint his bike, right? I'm sure he will. Yeah, yeah. But I'm excited to see it, just, man. It was funny. Um, it was a good time. And, like, the whole rear fender thing now, like, I feel like that's the thing that we're going to be doing everywhere, you know. And luckily, I had brought some paint with me to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, that, that Tennessee, like I, I was telling you guys, I really had a bad case of FOMO while I was here. Uh, I can't remember what we were doing here. I think I did something with the homies. So it wasn't as bad of a, yeah. like feeling like I'm missing out on the situation, but man, just like, I don't know, like all the homies there in one house party. Dude, it's like one party. Man, I want to party. Yeah. God, yeah like we literally had the show at, you know, in the parking lot. Yeah. Um, it was, it was pretty awesome. I don't, man, I don't remember what I was doing. I think that was the same weekend that Craig was here. Because I think Craig was in town, and we ended up doing that last podcast that okay. I did with Craig the same time you guys were out. See, I was here in town because um, I had my son that weekend. Okay. You know what it I mean? It was. I, I believe it was because yeah. I remember when uh, shortly, like literally two days after um, – the Tennessee thing. I was in Daytona and Kyle flew out and he's like, Oh yeah, I just got done listening to Craig's podcast. So it would have had to be the same yeah, yeah. weekend. Yeah, it was a good one. Uh that like I said, I wish I could have been there. I, I'd like to see what I would really want to do and I've been talking I me and Kyle talked about this, but I think our scene's decent size enough where we could actually do our own thing somewhere. But well, I think that I don't really I don't know. I don't I'm like I'm going to Craig's camp out, yeah. you know, in a week or so, and I'm stoked to go to see it. Like I said, all the homies. Yeah. But I fucking hate going east. It's so boring to me, right? And I know a lot yeah, of people are, hate going west because that's boring to them. It's like completely. Yeah, but there's personal. I, taste. I feel like uh, I feel like out west, it's a lot more scenic and like it just the roads are nicer yeah, than out east. Like, like it's open, you know. Yeah. Like you can, and you know, my friends make fun of me all the time because I tell them it's like I like being able to see far. Yeah. Like when you're. As soon as you go about forty miles, fifty miles, or hundred miles west of Dallas Fort Worth, you hit, you hit more of that Great Plains area, which is yeah. less trees. And man, it's to me, I just like being able to see far instead of like here where you see to the next tree line. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it kind of, I don't know, I like that vibe. But I, it'd be cool to find a, a place in the country that's not. I don't like doing things as convenient for people, right? Okay. I like. I want. I, I respect Alaska. the people that earn. Yeah, <laughs> fuck it. we're going all the way. I like to. I think that if if you know, it, it means more to me if we all earn it, right? Yeah. So it's like if all of us are based out of the east. So like you got, you know, like like the Smokies is a pretty convenient thing for a lot of people, right. considering it's not that bad. But what if we did that same thing in Colorado? Right. Now it's not convenient. Now we all got to work pretty hard for it in Colorado. I'm in the middle of either one, so it's like whatever. To me, that would be funner, and we'd all have to earn that ride, and we'd all enjoy that party a lot more because we all busted our ass to get there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I get that. And seeing this whole Tennessee thing, that was like the first real ride I ever did. Mm -hmm. So I, w I parked my truck uh, just north of Myrtle Beach and unloaded the bike, and it was only like, I don't know, it was like six, seven yeah, hours or something like that. Um, so it wasn't bad. It's a good but like, riding from Myrtle. I mean, Myrtle's kind of boring, but then when yeah. you get inland a little bit, you start yep. hitting some hills and trees. Yeah, well, seeing so I was uh, I was north in like it was actually in North Carolina, mm -hmm. uh, just over the border. And the the nice thing is is like it was I literally took back roads for well over half the trip, so that was kind of cool instead yeah. of just being on a um, you know like a freeway. Yeah, but, for sure. That area. I mean, like. This year was the first time I really explored all of, like, the Smokies. Okay. Like, you know, even where you guys were staying in, like, Gatlinburg. Is that where it was? Um, Sevierville. I think. Okay. But we were, well, like, Pigeon Forge. Pigeon Forge, yeah, yeah. That's right. 
right dude it's beautiful everywhere you yeah. ride over there it's fucking amazing man. well and then especially like now you got all the trees and everything changing color it's yeah pretty sweet pretty dope yeah but yeah i mean like i said uh i don't know I w i'd like to i think we should do like our own thing somewhere that's just, just make like, sure there's like a good go-kart track that yeah, we can go that'd like be fun. yeah so how was like you know we were talking about it too but just for the <laughs> listeners like you guys like made it your own thing you know what, what? i mean like the sm the v twin oh visionary like show. yeah pretty much we just did whatever uh literally i think most of the time uh chris zemlo he just pretty much led the way mm -hmm. he's like all right this is what we're doing today mm -hmm. um like just you know follow me or whatever because like he's been out there so many times yeah, that yeah. he knows all the roads and um dude it was it was awesome like i enjoyed it but i went to it not knowing anything about it period yeah so i didn't really i just i saw the poster you know the v twin visionary smoky store and that's all i knew is like there's a cabin that we have rented somewhere um i got yeah. the address to the cabin and i'm just going there and then so whatever like happens happens like i didn't know what we we're doing i didn't know there was a show i didn't know yeah. about yeah. any of it um but yeah I, said, I just i didn't really like care to research it all that much i just like i just knew that i was going yeah and that's what i'm saying like I, you know like when it comes to even like the camp outs you know what i mean like that's the concept of the camp out is just going and partying and shit like yeah. that which i get it, a lot of dudes don't like to camp and that's fine you don't have to you can bring an air mattress <laughs> or you can bring your your toy hauler it doesn't really matter to me it's just i like getting people out i like to see them come and do those things and have mm -hmm. those experiences because it really makes you love bike motorcycles a lot more than if you only rode your bike to the bar in your town that you're right. in. You know what I mean? Yep, for sure. So, and I see the bug starting to hit everybody in this little group of riding and traveling on it. Yeah. And I'm like, yes. Well, especially drink like, the Kool Aid. You got, yeah, <laughs> you got Jeremy and you know Steve, and then you got Ben. That yeah, busting out. Yep. I think Steve's coming down to Craig's camp out. Oh, really? I think he's riding down to that. So, um, yeah, I mean, like those dudes are awesome. Now I'm glad that they're all getting the. Uh, the bug because like i said steve was building big wheels and in really nice ones at that you know and um now you know he's got the whole like i want to travel and ride these yeah. bikes and fucking party and i'm like hell yeah brother <laughs> you know what i mean that's what it's about so it's dope man i love it I'm, like i said i'm not looking forward to riding to florida but i know that because of all the people that are going to be there i'm going to enjoy it 100 yeah. percent. you know what i mean yeah um now isn't it like out kind of in the middle of nowhere or what I don't know, man. Like I've I've ridden to Daytona and Orlando before, and I've been around Tampa before. Not I haven't ridden there yet. Okay, um, but this is apparently I don't know how many miles north of Tampa, but it's on that western side. Gotcha. Uh, and it's not like on the ocean. It's kind of inland a little bit. Okay. And apparently, it's a it's an actual biker campground. So interesting. That's one of the things. Like I've been uh, another guy reached out recently from New York, and he was talking about wanting to do a camp out, and I was like, man you're you're north and you're kind of you have a window of opportunity that infringes on a lot of other things that take place between may and october to where right. the rest of the country or anybody's right. going to want to go up there secondly he wanted to do it at a uh, koa which oh is boy. impossible you yeah know, because those places are 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 chained for one yeah they have rules at all right. of them um and you're just not going to be able to get away with like a hundred bikers showing up right. being rowdy and loud. Right. You have to go to like a biker specific or a campground where the, the toy haulers and motorhomes are secondary to the bikers there. Yeah. Because otherwise they're going to be pissed. Right. You know, I agree. It, yeah. There are times at 6 a.m. and people are still up at our camp out drinking, talking shit, turning on bikes to piss everybody off. Like it's just part of it. You know, it's a, uh, it's a good time though. <laughs> Yeah, especially like, you know, what you're saying, um, there's, I always hear like, especially customers, they always come up and they're like, ah, oh, this fucking place, like, you know, they're all pissed off at us for, you know, doing this and that at a campground. And it's like, well, where are you staying, dude? And like, oh, yeah. I'm staying at the resort over here. I'm like, well, no wonder why, like quiet times at nine o'clock, you know? Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. It's like the, you know, like going to like Daytona or even some of those rallies, like I've been to, uh the Panama one that you just left before. Yep. And uh, we, you know, I went with another bike club and we had like a hotel or like a, uh, like a, they stayed in one of those high rises on the, on the water. And okay. they just had like a house or like a condo, I guess it had a bunch of rooms in it, man. We fucking raised hell in that place, but they were chill. They knew it was yeah. a bike rally there. Right. You know what I mean? It wasn't like we were hanging out where all the other kids were going to the swimming pool and yeah. all that crazy well, shit. And I think that's just it. Like, I mean, with these cities that do put that on, like, 
Panama City and, you know, Daytona and whatnot. Like, it's bike rally in town. Like, they get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Daytona is like, I haven't been there in a while. I haven't gone in two years, I think. Yeah. I wish that, uh, it's, it's the same thing with a lot of rallies. Like, I think some of the towns have gotten too big for the rallies. Well, it, not necessarily that, I would say. I think it's just, uh, so for instance, like Daytona, I think they, they've been trying to shut down Main Street for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've been trying to put in all these rules and everything that like, um, you know, if if you own a parking lot in like the city, it, like don't hold me to this, but it was something like this where it's like, if you own a parking lot in the city or like in downtown Daytona, uh, right on Main Street, and your business isn't open for X amount of days a year, then you can't use it as bike parking for the rally. Like, so then there'll be like big vacant parking lots. Um, or if you're not open for, you know, X amount of days, we're not going to give you your vending permit. Like, mm. and so they're starting to like kick people out. So they want you to be um, open all year. Like for instance, like- one of the dudes that I know, uh, he sells a lot of, uh, just more than anything, motorcycle parts, like, um, anything from, you know, foot pegs to like just, some stuff that you don't normally find at a bike rally. Like that's what he's kind of kinda like, like a swap meet kind of vibe. Kind of, but is like it that one that has like the, the, it's like a storefront. Um, so he's got one in Daytona. Yes. Yeah. Um, and basically like normally he sets up in a, in a tent, but now here he's got an actual store. So I was talking to him last week and I'm like, dude, so like how was Daytona for you? He's like, I couldn't set up. I'm like, what do you mean? He says, well, because I don't work, you know, or I'm not set up there for X amount of days a year, they wouldn't give me a vending permit to vend out of the store, but he pays yearly rent on the building. Mm. So like, he's basically like, you know, I paid X amount of dollars all year long to rent this building out because I use it twice a year, but the city wouldn't give me a permit to vend out of it. So I'm like, dude, that sucks. That's like, weird. Like it's but, your business. You should be able to fucking right. Exactly. You rent but, the place. You know, the, the city's trying to get everybody. Like it's it's no different than Sturgis. You know, like all the places stay vacant, um, and they want they want that out. Yeah. They're, so and they're then they're like this year, the city's trying to get their money. Basically. This year there was cars and everything going down the streets in Daytona, and um, like it was just it was just a clusterfuck. Um, and then, like when they said that they were going to cancel it. Uh, Ormond Beach, they're like, come on over, like, we're gonna have a rally, you know, like, then we'll just move it all over here. And it's these people, like, I mean, dude, it brings in so much money for the town, and it's like, come on, like, they really? Don't, they don't see it, though. I, no. I think that the public doesn't see the, the money that's coming in. Uh, I think it's like, you know, I don't know, like, it... Not just what they're making on, like, permits and shit, but all the other businesses around it. Well, it's not necessarily, it's the actual, like, I mean, the amount of money that it actually brings to the area uh of you know it's all taxed you know like but so that's the thing about like galveston so remember like what is it two years ago now they had the the hurricane that came yep. through and fucked up galveston and houston they were begging people to come down there yeah because they and they were you know galveston's always been pretty good about being welcoming to the uh the bike ride that comes down there because it brings a lot of fucking money down there right. yeah and that's no different than like let's say surgers this year dude there's what is it um it's like a billion dollars that gets spent in surges on a Damn. normal year. That's wild. Yeah. Um, well, so that's why I think that like even like rallies, like say here in Texas, we have Rot Rally, which is more of a a like a of a um, they do it in like a grounds. Like it's not like like you're not really getting permits to vend on the streets because it's not. It's like at a it's at a uh, it's at a fucking I don't know what the word is like a. It's like an expo center, right? Yeah. So it's all fenced in. You got to pay to get into this place. It's a much different rally than Sturgis. It it it'd almost yeah. be like saying full throttle is right. the rally is Sturgis, and you have to pay seventy bucks to get in for gotcha. two days or some shit. Which I think that's kind of like basically what I'm doing in Galveston now. Uh, at this yeah. one that I'm going to, it's at like a campground or something. Yeah, it's all closed yeah. off. You got to pay your twenty bucks to get in, but whatever, it's something to do. So what I what I think would be good for some of these rallies, especially like rot rally, since it's kind of too big for Austin, and Austin's such an over over overpopulated st- city now that like all the bikes coming in, the traffic's super bad. I and mean, there's a reason why you don't have a bike rally in downtown LA. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then you got all these like really badass towns out, not necessarily West Texas, but just a little bit further west, and the riding is so much better, and there's less traffic, and these towns are kind of decent sizes. 
where they could probably get one of these fields and turn it into something like yeah. what? So, and uh, what I've been hearing, um, actually I was talking to um, uh, another guy here, let's see, a couple days ago. And he was telling me there was a, there's a big event that was going on going on in california it was like uh, some type of off-road event and what they did is they moved it to arizona because california wouldn't give them a permit for it mm -hmm. and there was like thousands and thousands of people that showed up and it was like a friday saturday deal mm -hmm. so on friday the, like it just packed this full area and then on saturday morning they shut them down because it was like it was so big that uh yeah because of the whole covid thing i guess Dude, that's but. i mean it feels like everything that has taken place this year has been bigger because of oh the, for sure our it's camp been, our camp out was huge yeah compared to what it normally has been or just like what it's been in the past Sturgis yep. seemed fine and normal as right. hell um, dude it just seems like everything's fine yeah. like as far as like as far as uh, the, those events and there and there are even more people you yeah know? I mean like I searched I mean like there's, there's like twelve masks you know like, yeah it just it and they were on boobs yeah <laughs> right <laughs> um, yeah it's just I don't know it's uh, this is an even number. But yeah, that's uh, I, I would like to see you know like some events that start hitting these like different parts of the and there they are like I guess the Four Corners rally was it's kind of more of a younger rally I think I've never done it no I, I haven't either you know but I haven't really I guess I'm kind of weird with it because like you know the, the those that rally is not too far from us you know like time wise like less than a thousand miles okay but they only reach out to people in Arizona and California to come be a part of it and I'm like man. I'm not coming out here to fucking kiss all these dudes' ass. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, why don't you ask some people in the Midwest to come out here and and, and show you guys what's going on in some sense. And so, I don't know. My ego's in the way, I guess, is what that is with that kind of rally. It's like, I'm not going to go out there and kiss everybody's ass that's on line. You know what I mean? Like, oh, man, so-and-so's going to be here. Can't, I got to go see that guy. Like, I see everything he does on line every day. You know? So, I don't know. Sick, brother. Sick, brother. Yeah. That's right. I'm sick. I need I need help with that shit, but no the um, you know there's a lot of different. I've been to like uh like Reno Street Vibes before. It's kind of, it's kind of a mix. Like it didn't feel Reno Street Vibes doesn't feel anything like. Like the rallies I've been to, like the Daytona, mm -hmm. it, it has the vibe. Like you have the street with a lot of vendors on it. You have the Harley dealerships doing their thing, but yeah, man, that that club culture is just so heavy up there that you you feel that presence real thick. Dude, yeah, I had man. that happen in uh, Galveston last year, man. Um, I was set up next to, I think it was like some banditos, and which I believe they what run the island or whatever. I think that's like yeah, their that's territory. They're from. That's their origin. That's okay. where they originated from. And they had like, I guess every X amount of years. That's so were you on that? Were you on like Seawall where that little restaurant no. is? Okay. No, I was. Uh, downtown i was downtown okay yeah and i like, it was a last minute deal i got like a shitty spot but anyways um so i'm standing there and all of a sudden like there's more and more and more of these guys that are kind of like starting to come around and i'm like and everybody's just standing there and i'm like what the hell and i look i start looking across the street and there's a whole nother group of dudes that are standing i don't remember what their names were yeah. Um, and they literally just had this standoff that went on for like two and a half hours. They brought in armored, like they weren't uh, like the Humvees, but they were like the, the SWAT vehicles yeah. and they parked those on each end of the road and they wouldn't let any people walk up and down the street. So literally like there's three vendors. There's, it's funny that you brought up this earlier, LEDs, seats and pinstriping. That's all it was. It's like, <laughs> and we literally just all sat there with our feet up because we didn't have any customers. Yeah. And these, you know, the bandito dudes are like, we're stare so, off. We're so, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it was. It was a stare off. He's That's like, like some fucking, uh, dude, like, he's like, like South Park shit. Dude, <laughs> he's like, we're so sorry. He's like, this is stupid. And I'm like, yeah, you like, dude, you think like, come on, man. Yeah. Like, but I, uh, like I said, I, the way the streets are, they're kind of like divided in half or whatever. There's like a, a median. So I was on right next to the median, um, kind of the way I was parked. So then there was like a whole nother street behind me, you know? And uh, like I said, I started seeing a few of these guys wandering around and then all of a sudden I went like back behind my truck and there was just like a sea of them. Like, I mean, it's like, they were just waiting for shit to go down. Like, yeah. It been, you drop like, your little tent down like, uh, yeah. you know, not, not open. Yeah, that would be a pain in the ass, man. Fuck, man. People More calling. I never answer my phone. You should start, like, just, just answer and just bullshit them. 
Dude, I'm not, dude, I do not have, dude, I've literally, dude, dude, dude. <laughs> Are we doing this on Are a we, podcast? Yeah. All right, here we go. So many, um, so many missed calls every day. And oh, I, I thought and, you were going to, I thought you were going to actually answer that. No, man, like all day long. So since 9 a.m., 9.15 a.m., okay, yeah. my daughter called once, but other than that, like I never answer these things because they're all selling something. It's always Google. And then I'm getting text messages trying to find out who I'm voting for. And then. There's all this shit going on. It's like, I just, I can't answer the phone anymore. Like, there's yeah. literally, like, I can't. You know what I mean? It's like, if, if somebody, and my voicemail says, hey, text me. Yeah. <laughs> like, please don't leave a voicemail. If you get to this point and you have something to talk about, and I also had to say on my voicemail, I do not work on bikes because I was telling you last <laughs> night. Right. We get these fucking rednecks out here that are like, hey, man, I got this Nighthawk V-Star. Uh, do you have a carburetor for do it? You have, do you have <laughs> a, a, a brake light for it? I'm like, who the fuck carries this shit? You know, and it's always, it, it's like the randomest shit, and they always traded something for it. Yeah. Yeah, I traded a CD player for this car and, <laughs> and all this fucking stuff, and it's like, or you'll get those people that buy those little Chinese little bikes, those little bitty mini bikes that you get from, like, flea markets and stuff. Yeah. And they'll stop working, and they'll think that they're going to bring it here. And Oh, yeah, man, that's your com combobulator right there, brother. You know, and you flip it over, and it's like, got you right there. How much to fix it? And it's like, dude, no. So I don't answer my phone because the other half of them is those dumb fucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're not dumb. I just think they're dumb. Right. You know? Um, so it's like if someone's actually calling about something to do with the podcast or pain or something, it's like, bro, text me. Yeah. Grow up. Text me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? They'll figure out a way to hold or like get a hold of you. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's even got to the point where like even like direct messages, they're getting overwhelming to the point where it's like, I yeah. just need people to start emailing. It just be with easy, you know, the email system, you can like flag them, put them in folders, keep track of active customers that yeah. you're dealing with versus, you know, people that are just having a conversation about possibly doing the right. work. Because you do a, you have a conversation about a helmet paint job or a bike paint job on Instagram and then you post something, a meme or something on a story, and then you get four hundred messages with smiley faces and <laughs> right, fire right, emojis. Right. And like you lose that shit. And like, fuck, I don't remember that dude's name. You know, was it Master Blaster twenty one or some shit? It's like Well then now Instagram changed like everything so it like goes off the, 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 the actual, actual name. name and not yeah. their screen names. Yeah. So like, then you get like just random, you know, like Jake. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> is jake from state farm yeah yeah well he sounds horrible <laughs> um but yeah it's just kind of a mess man and um trying to figure out how to you know i i stopped taking it work so that i can like restructure how i do it because i feel like if i start with a blank slate then i can figure out how to get a grasp of it and get get the like be able to take in work and get it done quicker as opposed to this like build up i keep getting every year of like orders coming yeah. in and it's kind of weird when it's like all the work you get comes from January, now it's December, and you're finishing up that work. It feels bad because of them having the wait, but it's like I feel like I'm stuck in January still. <laughs> like I yeah. haven't, you know what I mean? Like I'm doing work based on something you saw me do in January. You know, I don't know. It's a weird mind fuck for me sometimes. Here you go. That's where you just go completely different style next year. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. that's well. I like to I like to push my style with my own helmets and then go off of those. Well, I'm saying like you know so person sees what your helmets look like now and yeah. then by the time that it's, it's time theirs, to paint it's like oh yeah. man i'm into cartoons right now <laughs> right go <laughs> full all, jeremy on it <laughs> all i all i do is cartoons yeah, yeah. dude I'm, that was so last year yeah um how is it with you and like using like social media to help promoting your stuff do you ever get like people coming to the rallies and seeing you and having uh, following you or like, like yeah that? once in a while uh, yeah. so when i first started um actually it was so steve kafka who's a pinstriper out in yeah. arizona uh old dude i mean he's like been he's around. an og yeah. yeah um he well basically so i bought his kit when i first started and then i called him up and i'm like hey i want to order a couple more brushes and he's like like how old are you you know because like you know here's a 14 year old kid talking to him on yeah. the phone like and i was like i'm 14 he's like oh man like that's awesome yeah. he's like do you ever come to Arizona? I'm like, well, actually, my parents vacation down there, like over the winter, we usually come visit my grandma. Um, like, we go to Phoenix. He's like, oh, I'm from Phoenix. It's like, all right, cool. So I went down there and he actually did like some videos. And so there's some videos of me when I was like 14, 15, doing some just garbage pinstriping. I'm like, yeah. dude, it's just embarrassing. Um, 
and uh, I'll get people that'll come by and they're like, hey, I remember your videos from like 10 years ago. It's like, yeah. fuck, like, <laughs> like it's so embarrassing. Like I, I wish those things didn't even exist, but cool. um, yeah, it's pretty funny, I guess. Like, yeah. So I'll, I'll get people that'll come by and mention that. Uh, once in a while, you'll get like people that say, hey, you know, I follow you on yeah. you know, well, Facebook the, or Instagram. Like the but, social media thing can work out well for any, I mean, it's kind of like like the rally thing works well, but that's like you've already got that figured out. Now, if you you know like using social media to also build up a presence, yeah, and and to get like you know people to want that, I don't know. Like, so I'm not telling you don't, I don't anything I already know. I don't do stuff like like what you do where everything is shipping. You know, yeah. Uh, I just try not to. Like, I'm, I'll go to a rally, I'll set up, I'll do my work for the day. Like, and that's it. Like you get your I, nine to five kind of vibe, exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't want to deal with the shipping. Like, I mean, I will, I've done it before, but it's just like, I don't know, it's just an inconvenience. It seems like, you know, for something that might take me, you know, a couple hours to do, it will take me almost the same amount of time by the time you, yeah, you know, package unpack it, it and package it, yeah. it and then drive to the post office or UPS or whatever. And yeah, you know, but it, it's part of it, man. Like I said, you went to like, my UPS today. And so yeah. it's like, I've built a relationship with those ladies cause I see them twice a week right. and you know, they uh you know they're cool i actually have given them bike parts like that i've had because they're all, their husbands all riding shit okay um one of the ladies was in sturgis this year or actually oh, really? last year she was in sturgis not this year and i'm like hey what's up so you know it's kind of weird like i see you in waxahachie at the ups store but now you're in custer state park yeah you know that's interesting but it, it's uh i don't know man it's to me, it just worked out well be, because I don't do the rallies and stuff yeah. like that. And well, dude, like, and I mean, with what you're doing, just painting helmets, it's like that's awesome. I mean, it's yeah. just you can literally do that one piece, send it off to the customer, do another one. You know, I've always um, said this, and I've, I guess people are going to hate me for saying it again, but like when you're painting a helmet, you don't feel like you don't limit yourself because you have 15 more parts to match. Like, yeah. man, what, you know, a, 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 an orange line right here is going to make this thing fucking badass. Yeah. And you're not thinking about that you have to do it on eight more nine right, more right right i can parts. totally see that yeah. yeah where you know on a helmet it'll take you you know a couple minutes to do or whatever yeah even if Let's it say, takes yeah, like an, an extra day to do it would yeah. take an extra three days to do the right. other bike so it's right it's you know you end up being able to not the the higher end bikes i'm starting to pull in to paint when i'm talking to them about paint jobs, i was like man just look at my helmets like there's yeah. a lot of good paint jobs right there that have never been explored on a bike yeah you know maybe the color schemes but not you know obviously the graphics won't be the same because it's a different canvas but to me i'm like dude i i like it because i work out color scheme ideas in my head and i get to do it on a helmet and be like yeah <laughs> hell yeah that's way cooler than i thought it was gonna be or the the opposite oh, this sucks <laughs> <laughs> yeah this sucked um sorry man yeah yeah Got a lot of likes on Instagram. Here you go, bud. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I feel that's the one. That's the selling point for them. You know what I mean? Like, I know the world does not revolve around social media likes and that kind of bullshit. But yeah. man, like when you, I, I notice that certain customers of mine when they get a helmet and it gets a lot of attention, it makes them stoked about it. Oh, for sure. Well, you know and I get I mean? that with uh, customers that like they'll walk up after I get their bike done. They'll be like, it'll look great. And they'll be like okay and somebody will walk by and be like hey did you just do that I'm like yeah I'm like oh man it looks fucking awesome and the customer would be like Hell oh yeah. sweet like yeah okay cool yeah, and exactly. like another person will walk by and they'll say the same thing as the customers there and be like all right yeah i i did, i love it you know like, yeah they just literally <laughs> went from like just kind of slowly nodding their head to like you know Stoked. yeah like man it's gonna make me so cool yeah <laughs> and then you get to they'll come back and be like man i get so many compliments at all the gas stations like but that's Sweet. i mean that's what it is i mean all this stuff is visual it's yeah. it's the you know maybe you have a maybe you have some fucking miami ink bullshit story behind why you want to do this I'm not saying bullshit i'm just saying it to be yeah. funny but you know maybe you know you just need more attention and <laughs> we provide something to get well, your attention i mean like dude uh, it's no different than the helmet like for instance like that you painted for steve Youngkin. uh you know he walks around with that thing sets it down at a restaurant next to him and all there's nothing but people just walking by and like oh man hey can i get a picture of that helmet like yeah, yeah. it's awesome surprised it ain't on pinterest yet that's only people i'm surprised it hasn't been jacked yet like yeah dude you know, that's he, the other he'll thing. leave that thing on his bike too like, like he's he's dude. he's a brave man yeah 
They, like, uh, I remember we went to a place in Daytona, uh, and there's like a couple like dining, and they're like, "Hey, do you care if uh, Donald Trump dines with you?" <laughs> like we just let it, like set it at the end of our table because the tables were really close, and they're like, they look over and they're like, "Ah, that's kind of funny." Like, and then they were taking pictures of it. See, I wanted him to do uh, instead of "Make America Great" on the front. I said I wanted to say "Grab him by the pussy." I thought that'd been so much fun, dude. So I was just talking to uh, Jeremy about this, yeah. and he's like, "Next Fender idea for the next bike we paint." That's what it's gonna be like that's what's going in the hat <laughs> that's a that's a good little yeah. deal man i when i painted that helmet man i got so much backlash on you know let me let me rephrase it i didn't get that much i got a lot more people that liked it but i got a lot i got a handful of people that really just had to say something yep you know what i mean and it and it really overshadowed all the thumbs up and all the i like it or whatever the case may be and the same thing when simpson reposted it it was their most liked photo for 2019. Really? Yeah. But same thing. A lot of backlash yeah. on the deal. And they don't realize that all that t shit talking made their fucking algorithm go up. Oh, I suppose. With the helmet, yeah. right? So True. it's the same thing that happened with me. It was a really high photo for us or, or series of photos. And so it's, you know, I had dudes, I had other painters hitting me up going, why would you support that? I'm like, I fucking painted it, dude. Regardless of whether or not. I believe in Donald Trump. Like, dude, I'll fucking do an Obama helmet right now. Fucking pay me, you know? And he's like, well, would you do a fucking, uh, what was it, like a, a Hitler helmet? I'm like, I don't really know if, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't think so. I don't know. It would, I don't know if I have customers out there that are that far over yeah you know what i mean like hey man i'm really into hitler i'm like well i got black kids bro so i don't know how this is gonna work so like there's there's issues there right. you know what i mean same thing like i had a i had a, a i guess he's latino um wanting me to do a, a kobe bryant tribute helmet this okay. year and I've, I'm, I'm a huge basketball fan love yeah. bryant kobe bryant remember the day he got drafted got drafted to charlotte ended up traded straight over to uh to uh, the Lakers after that. I just know I'm a fan of it. And right. then when he died, like, that shit, I literally, like, fuck, man. Like, uh, you know, this dude's been, I've been watching this dude play basketball for a lot of my life. Like, it, yeah. I felt like I lost somebody, a friend or some shit, even though I never met the guy. Um, so when this dude reached, me out, reached out to me about doing this uh, Kobe Bryant helmet, I was like, fuck yeah. And he goes, well, look, man, uh, I, I, I really want this to match my sport bike. So he has a Hayabusa. He wants. He was down for the Simpson, but it was like a blue and white factory paint that. job. I'm like, no, dude, I'm not doing a blue and white helmet with a Kobe Bryant. It goes right. So then this dude starts calling me racist that I said no, I don't want to do his helmet. Right? That's me. Oh, it's Lucky Dave. I'm gonna call you back, Lucky Dave. <laughs> <laughs> um, so dude, literally, um, I'm name dropping like a motherfucker on here. So he literally starts calling me racist, right? Because I, I've always said if it's if if I flat out don't see it or yeah. just I'm not interested in the project, I'm just going to turn it down. To say no yeah. pisses people off so bad. And I was like, look, man, it's it's the color scheme. And, you know, I, I just if I'm going to do a Kobe Bryant helmet, I really just want to do a Kobe Bryant helmet, not try to match your bike. Right. So you look trendy at bike night. dude. Right. I want this thing to mean something to you more than like an accessory to your outfit, dude. And I mean. Dude just took it the wrong way. Started yeah, calling me. He's right. like, you just don't want to do it because I support Black Lives Matter. I'm like, I don't give a fuck who you support, bro. I'm literally telling and you that. Just, yeah. Like, it all of a sudden just all, went that far. And he wasn't even black. Yeah. He was a Mexican. Oh, really? Yeah. He was like, or Puerto Rican or some oh, well. shit. So I was like, bro, man, come on, dude. I mean, it, it like, I was like, <laughs> how, how, I mean, I don't know. It just blows my mind yeah. that like that, that shit, like. I wanted to do the helmet. I just didn't want to do it in that color scheme. Yeah. You know? Well, and for sure. I mean, it's got to be. You know, I'm the, I'm giving you art, bro. Like, you're going to get my art. Yeah. If you're not getting my art. Then you should have just done it and then, just, you know, still I don't, did it like the. Like I don't have it. I don't have that in me. And, yeah. I don't have it in me to uh, to to deal with, with like, customers that, that are very demanding that way. Like, um, almost every customer I have that, that's, you know, a little bit more open to talk and, like, communicate we become friends, which is yep. cool because like these dudes get me, they understand I'm complicated. I'm an artist in a sense. So I'm not easy to deal with, but I'm trying to give you the best of me in every job I do. Right. So if they can navigate and deal with my bullshit, then we're going to be good friends. And and I, I think that 
my work has gotten so much better over time because I started working with customers like that rather than doing things for anybody that had a dollar yeah. to, to hand me. And so you don't make as much money that way, but yeah, you, but here's the you thing. have like a better you, you quality turn, Yeah, exactly. You turn on all the, all the bullshit and yeah. you don't have to deal with it. And it sucks Which, because some of these people aren't bullshit, right? Like, they're not bad people. They just... Right, but it's just something that you don't want to, like, just deal with. Like, I mean... You deal with their personalities as well. Like, yeah. you were telling me about the dude last night with the... Uh, actually, you were telling me two things that I won't bring up the other one with, uh, with <laughs> oh, Colin. Okay. Yeah. But, the, but the, uh, the other one with... The, what was that one guy that was... Uh, the asshole you had to put a dick on his bike for yeah him. okay i think yeah. that's the one you were talking about yeah yeah it's like he deserved that well right he did <laughs> yeah dude the, the, i've put on i put dicks on people's bikes before they were assholes yeah yeah just like random in the graphics perfect if you put them together if you really just like cover one eye you'd, you'd see the dick <laughs> you know what i mean just little cock and balls yeah. right there on the side just of your fairing went really hard yeah, yeah it's like that don't be a dick then <laughs> there was a uh there was a sharpie bike that was well in Daytona that we were looking at and this this last one right yeah didn't uh Corey Souza have that one done or something no like no that was the um that was like the black one with all the round circles oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the one right that was just all over the place I don't I didn't look at it personally but like it was like holy shit yeah it's like lots of circles lots of circles yeah. with all kinds of stuff in them like you know little Debbie Michael Jackson and I, was just I don't really get it either. I, I haven't really looked into it like, that much, but you I, have to be like really, really stoned or drunk or high or on an acid trip or something like that. To yeah, or come in up a with some Facebook the, rabbit hole on conspiracy dude, theories. Like or you'd have to <laughs> literally be, you know, on a different planet to come up with some of the stuff that was on that bike. You know, he's a visionary. <laughs> it's awkward silence. It is awkward answer. silence. Yeah, like I don't know where I was going with this. Yeah, you're not, you know how it feels now, huh? But no, it's, uh, I don't know, there's, there's, I don't know, it's crazy, man. I, I don't like to, I know that I talk a lot of shit about customers, but, I mean, like I said, I, uh, you know, Mark Norton, the guy yeah. that got the house, one of my best customers, one of, someone I've actually had long conversations with about business. Yeah. That's the kind of relationships I've built with a lot of my customers, you know, homie himself or Aaron Coit, guys that I consider friends that I talk to a lot, and these guys support me, and and you know, in, in a in a big way, man, I don't feel like I I would have been able to you know progress here without those kind of guys supporting me and letting me go to town. But with their then again, it's like you know, it's like the whole you know performance bagger, um, kind of like the whole group of people. I mean, pretty much everybody. Like you just you get along with everybody so easily. It seems like um, it's just it's cool people. It is. Know? It will. There's no. So far, we it's still small enough. Yeah. That we don't have any, and and not everybody's kind of established, if that makes sense. Like there, you know, Jeremy's established, yeah. I'm established, you're established, Kyle's established. Um, you know, Daniel from Proper Baggers has a business separate from out of this. Like most of us in yeah. it are all, you know, we're we're not like hungry guy. I mean, we're hungry, but we're not like ready to slit each other's throats for an opportunity because we're all kind of established for yeah. lack of a better but word. Like, you know, and that's the other thing, like where everybody just kind of works together, you know? Yeah. Um, it's just, you know, for instance, like you say, you know, Mark Norton and stuff like that. Um, like it's the first time I ever met him two weeks ago. Um, but just awesome dude. Like, you know, you never, you couldn't go to like, uh, I feel like for me, you get, you get a little more personal with your projects. I feel like than I do yeah. where it's like, usually, you know, I don't necessarily make friends at a rally off of like pinstriping their bike yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. I might back home where they'll come over and be like, Hey, you know, I want you to pinstripe my bike and then I stripe it and then we just sit around and bullshit. Um, but like, it's, I think it's different, but anyways, like what I'm, I guess I'm trying to get to is, you know, just meeting new people mm -hmm. that are into the same type of bikes. And it's just like the people themselves are actually, yeah. you know, they're all super rad people. Yeah, um, exactly. You don't. Have, it's not like the. And you kind of want to be a part of that that thing when people say like all these dudes are super rad. Like you feel like you got to you're held accountable to be a, a solid dude. Yeah, and it's just like and it's one of those things where like I mean if you're not a part of it, I don't think you would like like yeah whatever like you know it, so if, if you weren't into you know like in the group that we're in or what I don't even want to call it a group, but like, let's say, uh, into performance baggers or something like that. And like, yeah, these dudes are just saying, like, it's just a bunch of really cool people that are doing it. But like, it really is like everybody. I mean, 
you know, there's 18 of us that show up and stay in one house in Tennessee and like we got along fucking great. Yeah. Like it was just, it was awesome. Like it was 18 of the coolest people like that yeah. you could have there. Um, like it was just, it was really, really cool. Yeah, exactly. Um, and y'all really had a fun time, man. The go karts, the oh man, all that shit. Go karts. I, I had a, I had a good time. You know, Steve did a video. Steve Chamberlain did a video, wrapping it up, and I was like, "Fuck, man!" And that was I was I liked it. I enjoyed. It. I think it was yeah. a long one too. It was. It was like twenty some minutes. Yeah, long. I was yeah. like, "Fuck, man!" Like I, I really, did. I just, I wish you would have got more footage when we went to New York. Yeah, because I don't think you really shot a lot. I don't. I don't know. Like, I I, I would have loved to saw the all that from his his point of view. You yeah, know what I mean, because that was a really badass trip going up there, but. But yeah, his uh, that video was fun, and just watching y'all do the go kart racing, doing the him and Rusty on the fucking dragon, just fucking going yeah. at it, like that shit's badass, man. And I, I liked it. You know, there's a little bit of everybody in this group, you know, or in this scene, right? You got guys like Rusty, who's a stunt rider, uh, an old, uh, not old, but like a uh, he has raced right. bikes before. Yeah. He understands road racing and things like that. You got Steve Chamberlain. You got, you know, my machinist doing, he's a fucking machinist. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. what he is, right? <laughs> yeah. so, your uh, machinist? Yeah, your machinist. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, like the the painters of us that are into this stuff. And, you know, it's just bringing a lot of different people that are all pretty rad. You know what I'm saying? In my opinion. So, but we haven't really made a lot of West Coast friends yet in this thing. We need to, we need to, I don't know. We need to have this nationwide fucking. So maybe over. that maybe that should be like the, the. The direct. challenging, like, you know, trip or the. Yeah, fine. You know, like, do it go, in like. Go to California. Do it in like the border of like Utah and Colorado. There you go. That's where we all from the East have to go to there. That way, you know, Californians like to ride that far. So we can get them to kind of come just a little bit. Just a little bit. I got to talk a little shit. I got, you know who the Tulane Life dudes are? Uh, yeah, I actually met them out uh, in Surges. Yeah, solid dudes, right? Yeah. Um, so they're actually going to ride here because I've been low-key talking shit to them basically i wouldn't i haven't been talking shit. those are my guys i love galen and uh and lance to death they're they're really great ambassadors for yeah. performance baggers to be honest with you that's what they're riding so I guess one of them was like a uh, old sign painter or something like that right yeah, yeah. Uh, lance uh, okay. so lance curry's dad uh big lance is what they call him he he was a sign painter he he does a lot of lettering on these okay. helmets and shits yeah which i've i noticed and like that's kind yeah. of cool and it's cool because they're all he'll put like different things like mama uh yeah. curry or whatever or yeah, their last name and shit. So they started this whole two lane life thing, and it's really rad because they are just putting a lot of effort into it. And they're kind of showing what my brand has always been about with these bike trips and stuff like that. And and they're finally coming here to Dallas. And uh, so they're going to ride here, do the podcast, and then I'm going to take them down towards uh, like San Antonio and do the, okay. that kind of riding with them. And then they're going to head back to California. So. It's still, I'm stoked to see it, man. Cause like I yeah. said, I know I have some homies from Cali that ride all over the country, but it's like one dude, like Oliver from the cut rate. This dude rides all over the country. Uh, Joe kid from, you know, the FXR guy up there in in a uh, Lodi and shit like that dude rides like no other dude in this planet. But then there's like this, a lot of other ones that barely get out. They just don't go that far, but they don't have to go that far. That's the, that's the argument. I, I mean, true, and like, and I guess that's just it. Like out there, dude, um, when we went out, like it was literally within an hour, you're in the mountains. And then next thing you know is like, it was just, it was, it was really cool. Like the riding that we did out there with, you know, yeah. with Kyle, Daniel and uh, George. And um, it was a, it was a great time. For you need sure. to get George on a bagger now. Is he still riding a soft tail? I think so. Soft tail George. Yeah. <laughs> well, cool, man. Where are they gonna well, find you next year? You gonna get all the rides uh, again, dude? I hope one so. More year? I mean, I one more year, <laughs> right? Four Something more like years, nine more years, <laughs> nine yeah. more years. There you go. That'd be cool. Like, uh, so you're gonna go to Galveston after this? Is that um, yeah. So basically, well, I'm going to Dallas. Obviously, this weekend I'll be at Strokers. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what that'll be like, and then um, just something to do, I guess. And then Galveston next weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then and you're then done after, for the year. And then go after back that, home? dude, I have no idea. I don't plan on going home because it's snowing. So oh, yeah. I don't want to go home. I just I'm gonna try to stay down south somewhere. Dude, go out west. Go to go to Cali. No, I don't want to do that. Oh, it's scary. Like, <laughs> I don't want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I kind of want to go to Cali before the end of the year, but this is the first year in a couple of years I haven't ridden there, so I'm kind of like feeling some type of way. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens on Tuesday. 
Yeah, dude, uh, I'm, I'm kind of feeling like we should have a watch party here. Or some I feel shit. like if you do, I should stick around just so I could be a part of it. But yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't even know. I, I should be able to get it on the TV, but I don't know how that would work. But I don't know. Like, I try not to share too much uh, left or right how I feel about things because I'm not very educated in anything. Yeah. I mean, I, I have, I have my party. I want to win because what I think that the very limited research I've done, I think it's best, but. I don't. I, I couldn't really hold up an argument in a debate with somebody that's actually been following all the shit that's going on, which is impossible. It's like all the shit going on in politics right now is if you're like if you had ten TV shows on at the same time and you had to follow it all and know what was happening in each one of them, same time. Meaning there's ten TVs, ten different shows, and you're watching all of them. And you're like, how do you even take this in and have Pretty an opinion much. about any of these shows? Right. Well, and that's just it because like you know one news media will have one thing and another news media will be the exact opposite. So. Yeah. And then you, dude, it's just a nightmare of like trying to navigate an opinion or idea with any of this shit. You're yeah. just like, fuck me, man. So I don't, I try not to get into it. I do. I've had, I've had to, <laughs> me and my buddies will get to talking about it. Cause traveling, like you see the country in a different oh, way, sure. man. I know you have yeah. as well. Like you just get a different perspective of a lot of things. And, and some of it you feel like, oh, man, like, you know, when I was in Chicago, like I was expecting while I was riding around Southside with uh, with DA dudes chucking them, I was expecting to see someone get shot there. I was like, <laughs> fuck, man, like I might get to see a shooting today. Dude, it's fucking normal as shit. It's no different than South Dallas. It's just, I mean, it's hood, but it ain't yeah. like death, you know? Like I yeah. felt scared, more scared in Stockton, California oh, than, than oh, okay. there. I was going to say, you like, know? did Kyle take you for a tour through uh, East St. Louis? Did not go through that. I did okay. drive across the bridge. Okay. And, like, I was higher, so I didn't go gotcha. any stoplights. But I heard it was a shit show. Oh, yeah. Right. Like, when I first went there, uh, like, to visit him, uh, we had, like, a, a week off uh, after, like, one of the shows. And he's like, oh, I'll show you around. Like, dude, it was just, like, apartment buildings with windows missing left and right. Like, there's just... It is. It was weird. I was expecting to be more freaked out by being in uh in New in New York. Really? Yeah. Like I, because I never been there before. So like, okay, we were we were down in Coney Island, uh, and where we parked the first time, the guys like, oh no, 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 let's park down here a little bit. So they moved us down a little bit further, and he's like, yeah, it's fucking crazy over there. I'm like, man, it didn't look that bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? But those buildings like there's so many people there yeah. and like you walk down a rat and i don't know i don't know yeah, where i mean like i totally get it like i've only been in new york once um like new york city and it, yeah it's just it's definitely a different lifestyle yeah period like i mean it's just it was weird like being in brooklyn i felt like i was <laughs> like i grew up on rap 90s okay. hip-hop you know, from like the West Coast, the East Coast, all that going back and forth. Like I'm, you know, I was, I started high school in 97. So like, you know, the I most popular two. thing was fucking <laughs> Tupac. You were two. Uh, Tupac was the most, you know, one of the most, you know, popular dudes. I mean, he had just been shot, you know, the year before. <laughs> but then Biggie got shot in my first year of high school. Seeing like, and I don't do music. Yeah. Like, so, so I don't have a fucking clue what you're talking about. So. So to wrap this into something that maybe you understand is like basically uh, I grew up with this music that talked about the culture that they lived in. Yeah. Then you watch any kind of movie from back in the day. And I, I grew up playing basketball, so I watched movies like Above the Rim and He Got Game and, you know, fucking all these things that like dictate or depicted New York culture on the street from like playing basketball and stuff. And it was always hood as fuck. Yeah. And then I'm there and I'm like, man, like this place is pretty flowery <laughs> you know what i mean like i see a lot of leather and uh in nice yeah but boots. i feel like i feel like depending on where you because i've seen that like i know yeah. what you're talking about um where like i remember um i was going out to this uh restaurant or whatever um and i was gonna meet up with a friend and take the subway to wherever it was i literally get up and it's just nothing but boarded up wall spray paint everything yeah. there's just a whole group of dudes playing basketball you know yeah. in the street and i'm like mm, like that's interesting like uh, just walk there walk, and yeah. do my thing like I'm trying to think of where else i've been that like was kind of sketchy I've, new orleans was sketchy um i ran out of diesel um in memphis one time that was sketchy Dude. so yeah <laughs> i didn't even talk <laughs> at, about this at two o'clock in the morning what part of memphis uh fuck i don't know it was like west side somewhere um oh. like but it was it was 
like just outside of Memphis where like it was Arkansas side or the other side I couldn't tell you I have no idea but all I know is um, the dude at the gas station was like it's a nice bike you got there boy like it'd be a shame if somebody took that wow and I'm like "Uh, I'm just gonna get out of here like I was just trying to so get diesel back to the truck but i don't know if i've talked about this yet on the podcast because i've been releasing all the podcasts i've done while i was on the trips to new york which i still have um so i still have like five left to release okay. right and so i left new york and i was trying to make it to little rock which would have been 1300 miles straight and that's that would have been my record for how long yeah. i've done in you know 24 hours and i was at 1150 which still was a record for me because my best was 1100 miles so I'm at 1150. I'm coming west on 40. Yeah, west on 40. And right when you get into Memphis, you have to like go north okay. just a little bit and go around the city. The, the highway doesn't go through the city, right? Okay. And so I'm on the north east side at the curve where it starts to curve and go back uh, west again. And that's when my compression release popped out. And I'm sitting on the side of the highway trying to figure out because I knew it was like a, a leak of some kind, yeah. right? Um, but when it happened, it was, you know, fucking 12 o'clock at night. And, you know, I'm kind of zoned out. It happens. I pull over. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Did I blow the motor? What happened? You know what I mean? Found out what it is. And I'm like, where the hell the hell am I going to get somewhere? And then I'm like, well, I'm going to chill here and see if anybody responds to my Instagram uh, deal. And then I look on the ground. I'm on the side of the highway, and there's like five or six bullet casing shells. Seriously? On the ground, right where I'm at. I'm like... Of all the fuck, <laughs> who the fuck, like, just, are they just shooting on the highway and shit now? So I'm like, all right, so I, I found out it was a compression release. I kind of shoved it back in there. I didn't turn it in, but I just put it back in so it wasn't around, uh, rattling around. And then I, I drove backwards on the highway because I was on top of a bridge, and I okay. drove back to the exit. Okay. And then I found a hotel, like, less than a mile away, and I went straight to it. The hotel was scarier than the highway. <laughs> Dude. I pull, I pull into this hotel. It's got a big ass gate around it, right? With the, you know, with and I, and I park and I, I walk in and talk to the lady, uh, get a room. It's fucking expensive as hell. I go out. There's like five cars in the parking lot, on, lights off, but they're on. And you can see people in there because you see like the smoke coming out of the, the tailpipes and shit. And so basically, I stayed at a hotel where hookers go. Okay. Right. <laughs> and. You know, I, I, I fortunately I got a, a a room right there where I could see my bike. Um, I'm in there and I can't sleep because I'm fucking nervous as hell. There's so many people walking around outside. It's not like it wasn't like a hotel at two in the morning that you would think of. It's dead. Like no, dude, there, it's like fucking a party out there per, pretty much. So I, I set my alarm for every thirty minutes to wake up and check on my bike. The shower didn't even come on. Like you turn the knob, nothing happened. Didn't even like, like sputter anything. So I had to take like a little hoe bath in, in the uh, sink, <laughs> and it was the worst thing. And uh, so Rusty ended up saving me. Okay. Uh, he ended up coming up that morning, and we got it screwed back in. Went back to his place, and uh, he made a tool for the to retighten the the compression release okay. down. But it put me behind like probably four hours four or five hours and those four or five hours would have been the difference between me making it home that day and not yeah. so i left there stopped by uh tony at rebels den he, he did a, the first oil change on the motor for me okay and then as soon as i left there pouring rain i made it like 100 oh, miles shit. and i had to get a buddy to come pick me up because the last 200 miles uh back to dallas it was it was so much rain it was flooding my bike out yeah. and uh even with the rain sock it was like would you have a rain sock i'm like dude it still floods your bike out with a rain sock yeah. You know what I mean? It just takes longer. And so uh, I ended up getting home at like 2 in the morning. My buddy Jacob from East Texas went up there, picked me up, brought me back here, and went home. He's, he's my savior, man. So crazy, though. Like, I was scared shitless. Like, I wasn't scared I was going to die. I just didn't want to get fucked with, man. I didn't yeah. have a gun on me or anything like that. Or Not that I would have shot somebody, but I had nothing. Like, I had a fucking wrench. Not even. It's like a 10 millimeter. You can't even do shit with a 10 millimeter. If it was a, a three-quarter... I fuck you up, <laughs> ten millimeter. I ain't got shit to do. You know what I mean? So, it was a uh, it was a sketchy night in Memphis. Memphis is tough though. I've heard so many different things about it. Like, I don't. I've never spent any time there. <laughs> just get the fuck out. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Once in a while, I'll just drive right by through and. Yeah. Other than that, that's the only place I've ever been to, or that in Stockton. 
But I used to work in Stockton at, at my buddy's shop out there a lot when I'd go to NorCal. So I kind of got used to the okay. to the to how it is. Like you kind of see the patterns, you see the the vibe of things, and you know it's definitely it's definitely sketchy out there. But it's sketchy because there's a lot of homeless people out there, and they're mm -hmm. all kind of fucking like. I always said it's like watching The Walking Dead in real in real time because it just looks like zombies walking yeah. around and shit like that. It's pretty wild. Um, but yeah, it's wild. Once again, it's wild. Hmm. <laughs> well, cool. Well, they can follow you on Instagram at. They sure can. At Roach Customs. Customs spelled with a K. Oh, and fancy. Yeah, damn dude, right, dude. dude. Custom, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, at least it's not spelled with a Q. Yeah, yeah, that'd yeah. be fucking weird. It would be weird, but it's actually a thing. I think Kyle's the one that actually told me about this. Yeah. Oh, man. I don't know about that one. It's, uh, let's say, like, if you see maybe, like, let's say a 2012 Camaro with, like, 36s. Okay. That, okay. That'd be custom that'd with be a Q. Custom with a Q. Yeah. So, anyways, Roach Customs on Instagram and Roach Pinstriping on Facebook. Facebook is, you, you've had that a long time and pushing that pretty strong. Yeah. Huh? That's cool. They can also, if they follow you, they can keep up with where you're going. Yep. And, and, uh, and stuff like for that. sure. And then MontyRoach.com um, on my website. So got my whole schedule on there. Cool, man. Y'all go get some striping. I'm going to try. Hell yeah. All right. Thanks, bud. Thank you, Monty, for coming on the show and sharing all that awesome shit about yourself. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, if you want to help and support this podcast and maybe get a little bit of extra content that we don't release to the public, check out our Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Fast Life Garage. A dollar a month gets you all that content, helps support this podcast and grow, and uh, just pretty much keeps us in business. So check that out as well as check out our sponsors, Dream Rides John on Instagram and TeamDreamRides.com. Don't forget he's got that 100 day same as cash that'll help you out. Paint Huffer Metal Flake and PaintHuffer.com Fast Life 25 gets you 10% off. Thundermax EFI on Instagram at shoptmax.com. Fast Life at checkout saves you 10%. Lex and Moto on Instagram and Lex and Moto.com. Offer code Fast Life saves you 15% off their awesome products. Simpson Motorcycle Helmets on Instagram and Simpson Motorcycle Helmets.com. And last but not least, Electric Lighting Co. on Instagram and NAMS Custom Cycle Products.com. Offer code FL2020. This weekend, as of November 21st or November 21st, we're having our hood ride, which is the best way to describe it is a lot of law breaking and hopefully so many people there that cops can't mess with us. So if you're in the DFW area or surrounding area and you want to come out, we're going to be meeting at Strokers Dallas at 3 p.m. My dude, Dirty Durs, is going to be leading a group of very highly sophisticated stunt riders. See, I giggled on, I, I giggled on that one. Uh, across the DFW landscape and uh, we're going to end it at Anvil Pub where we'll be uh, celebrating drinking uh, alcoholic beverages and uh, just having a good old time. So if you're looking for something to do this weekend, we got you covered. This event is sponsored by Lex and Moto, uh, Simpson Motorcycle Helmets, and myself, the Fast Life Garage. Sit Down Steve is going to be in town. He's going to be throwing out Lexans and hoodies and shit as well as Simpson will be throwing out some products uh, it's going to be a good time. Uh, hopefully you guys can make it. If not, you can catch it on Instagram because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of talk about it. So at any rate, I want to thank you guys for checking out this podcast. And our next episode will be with the Tulane Life guys. You guys have a good one and we'll see you this weekend. Peace. <laughs>